film festival graphic designer decides to go with film reels for the O's, and getting Grandma into a family reunion t-shirt is a three-person job, the entire 144-minute cut of this week's review is available now for just $11.99 on Laserdisc. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. All you have to do is dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Are millennials lazier uh, than generations that had come before? Are they? Do they have less of a work ethic? Christopher Cantwell is in the studio here tonight with me, Ian. And uh, you brought a story in about these millennials. Chris Cantwell, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Thank you for having me. I'm, it's always such a pleasure to be here. And yeah, I do think I do think that they're lazy. I had read this story, and I mean, we we started to talk about this actually last week a little bit. Mark had a had a story like uh, 24 reasons millennials are screaming mad about the economy, and some of it was that like they really are getting screwed. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But you know, part of it is that they don't have any work ethic. I think, and I and I saw this story today, and it sort of interested me for that reason that they're basically their idea is that, you know, hey, I'll just stay at this job for a year and go get another one because, you know, I'm real cool and could just get whatever I want in this world. And Let's talk more about it coming up here. If you uh, have thoughts on the millennials or maybe you are a millennial, that would be generally somebody who was born after the year 1980 or so. I'm not sure when the official cutoff is. Yeah, I think like you and me probably just sort of missed that boat, I think. You I'm know. At the, I feel like I'm at the tail end of Gen X. I think 1980 is sort of generally yeah. considered right around the end of that, but... I'm sure these are sort of floating guidelines anyway. Where, where does one generation begin and another one end? Yeah, How do I you mean, determine it's, that. I think, you know, you, you sum a generation up to like a 30 year period, and depending on when you want to call what generation what, you know. And also in the news, Bill Cosby. We haven't talked about this yet on Free Talk Live, but it's been blowing up all over the place uh, in the last week or so, it seems. And in case you haven't heard, Bill Cosby, the you know preeminent family dad character on television from way back the Cosby show in the 1980s and was it early 90s I think that show yeah went I used into. to I used to uh I don't know if I was watching it in, I don't know if they were making new episodes in the 90s but I was certainly watching reruns of it in the 90s no question about that and you know uh, the Cosby Show was I watched that you know all the time and yeah to find out that Bill Cosby uh, is accused of drugging and raping women was sort of like what the heck is going on today when I when I was checking my news feeds he's uh, almost seventy seven or is seventy seven he's right around there he's pretty uh, pretty elderly at this point and now all of these accusations are rolling in about him and you know alleged incidents that happened many of them a long time ago. Uh, the story from TheGuardian.com, a new sitcom billed as a multi-generational family comedy, has become the highest profile casualty of the renewed swirl of rape allegations against the comedy star Bill Cosby after NBC confirmed it has decided to scrap the project. Their spokesperson told the AP that it is no longer under development with no further embellishment. NBC's decision not to move forward with the plot takes the storm that has been gathering around Cosby to a new force factor. It's the fourth and by far the most important media appearance or deal to have been severed, beginning with a canceled visit to the Queen Latifah show last month and followed by the dropping of his slot on The Late Show with David Letterman that had been scheduled for this week. Hours. So I must be I'm I'm like behind on this like I thought that this like came out today so like there there's been I guess uh, some allegations swirling around Bill Cosby and the news today is that NBC canceled the show that's correct okay. also Netflix has apparently canceled something as well they say they have well they've postponed right uh, a special broadcast marking the actor's 77th birthday. The streaming channel did not give reasons for delaying transmission of the tribute broadcast. This is a strange term to use for Netflix. They don't broadcast things on Netflix, do they? They're all on demand, right? I mean, you cast them over broadband, but that's not generally the term we use for streaming video. Yeah. yeah. Which was scheduled for the 28th of November, issuing a curt statement that only read, quote, At this time, we are postponing the launch of the new stand-up comedy special, Bill Cosby 77. 
uh, unquote. An overtly family show that would have featured Cosby playing the patriarch to three daughters and several grandchildren. NBC's planned sitcom was always vulnerable to the billowing accusations that have struck or stuck rather to the star since they were first raised in 2005. In that year, Andrea Constand, a former manager of the women's basketball team at Temple University in Philly, Cosby's alma mater, said that she had been drugged and sexually assaulted at his home. She pressed a civil suit that was settled the following year. In the course of that lawsuit, 13 other women were reported in court documents to have come forward. In recent weeks, the allegations have resurfaced, with several women renewing their accusations that Cosby sexually assaulted, raped, or in some cases, drugged them. I mean, I think that he should do a stand-up act and tell all rape jokes, nothing but rape <laughs> jokes. I think that that would be like a pretty good response to this. The thing to me is, especially like you mentioned, the one had the civil suit, which is, you know, settled out of court. I mean, it's it happens every time when you've got a, a celebrity up there, right? That, that it's, okay, well, first of all, why don't you say something in the beginning? You know, and, and yes, I know that there are things that we say that, uh, you know, uh, women go through the entire process all over again when they're being questioned by police and stuff like that. And there are reasons that people don't report rapes. I do understand that. But then what is it that, that possesses a person to come out and do this, you know, 20 years later uh, when a guy, you know, has a bunch of deals on the line, you know, and it and it and it upsets me because. One of the things that you, you, you get into is, you know, I had the thing the, the a couple of weeks ago or whatever, the, the rape culture demonstration, you know, and these women are out there like, oh, it's rape culture. It's, it's socially acceptable to forcibly have sex with a woman. I'm like, are you out of your mind? They, they go and they throw this at Cosby and they'll ruin a guy's career at 77 with a 20-year-old allegation. Well, now, to be clear, Chris, uh, there are several allegations going on here, right? So I, I get all your points and they, yeah. they are right on as far as the old allegations but this lady, uh, Constand, Andrea Constand, apparently these are within the last decade, and she uh, filed that lawsuit just a couple years after the incident. So well, it's not exactly as- though, right? Because you can't prove a rape a couple years after a rape happened. You That's have true. to go to a doctor like the next day and be like, "Hey, here's body fluid. Here's drugs in my right. system." I mean, like these things are pretty easy to straighten out if they. If, I mean, not you know, you can't fix the problem. Don't get me wrong, but right. you can go and hold an aggressor accountable if you go and you deal with it. If they're going to say, "Hey, I just don't want to talk about it." And they go home and they, you know, get in the bathtub and stuff like that and start destroying evidence for their victimizer. Then I'm sorry that when I say that when you come after a guy with a whole bunch of deals on the line 20 years after the fact, even 10 years after the fact, you know, I don't have a whole a, a lot of sympathy for what you're doing at that point. I've got some of the allegations here. Get a little more specific from some of the women involved here. Yeah. So we'll share what that is. We'll go to your calls and thoughts as well. Scott's in Raleigh listening to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Scott. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, Scott, go hey, ahead. I wanted I wanted to comment a little bit about uh, millennials and work ethic and so forth. And sure. I I started seeing this. I'm I'm of the generation. I was born in '62, and I started seeing this even when I was in high school of my contemporaries, and of course, you know, people further on. So we're talking about Gen X and so forth. Okay. Um, basically, like for instance, my parents or grandparents said that you've got to work hard, and when you work hard, you get somewhere. But it seems like, and it's been like this for me for over 30 years now, that when I go to like a, a service industry, you know, like if I'm staying overnight at a hotel or if I'm going to a checkout at a grocery store, whatever it might be, that the person behind the counter does not understand or have the attitude that, that we were taught when we were younger of the customer is always right. In other words, you be um, uh, cordial, you be uh, tactful, and whether you agree with it or if you like it or what have you, you you know you, you do the best you can to serve because that's what your job is. Your job is just purely to serve that other person. I've never been and a big I fan. I've never been a big fan of the saying the customer is always right. The frequently, they're wrong. The customer is frequently a moron, right? Let's just be honest with ourselves. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, 
No, you got to understand. That, I, that, I, that's I was about there. I was about what to I'm confirm exactly is, what you're saying, which is you are supposed to behave as though the customer is always sure. Right. You yeah. are supposed yeah. to be customer oriented. Exactly. You're supposed to serve the customer and try your best to be as understanding and as patient uh, as possible, even right. while they're yeah. wrong. The, the idea is to get <laughs> this guy's money and send him out of there happy, so he keeps on bringing it back. It doesn't mean he's right, but you know you are supposed to treat him that it's way. It's true, Scott. I want you to hang on if you can. Right, we right. want to bring I, you back here in a moment, give you a chance, Scott. Hang on. We'll bring you back. Here in just a moment, you can uh, finish up your thoughts. We'll also take your calls at 855 450 free. Now, Scott's saying that the laziness factor or the shiftlessness uh, also applied to Gen X. Maybe this is just a teenage young person problem, teenager 20s person kind of problem. We'll come back with more. What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. On the table so far tonight, two topics, but you can bring up anything that you'd like. Uh, we're talking about both Bill Cosby and the rape allegations that have surfaced, uh, apparently again, uh, about Bill Cosby from multiple sources now. Also, uh, millennials. Are they more shiftless than the pre- previous generations of young people or is it just that young people have always been you know not so interested in crappy jobs uh, we'll get into more on that your calls and thoughts are welcome and want you to know how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from buzzbox it's shade grown 100 percent organic and top one percent grade arabica now Buzzbox coffee is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something that goes above and beyond the call of duty for a coffee company. They're actually teaming up with Free Talk Live and Kiva.org to help us change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to improve their own lives through microloans. So when you buy your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners who does that, we can fund one new microloan. And once that microloan's paid off by to whoever the recipient is, uh, we'll fund another microloan out. So you can help us do that by getting some great coffee delivered right to your door. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You just pay the shipping cost. You get your first pound free. You can cancel your subscription at any time. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. Uh, Ian and Chris in the studio here. Scott is with us still in Raleigh. Scott, you were commenting on your opinion about millennials. But you also mentioned Gen X. You feel like both of those generations have been problematic when it comes to customer service. And I wanted to make sure you had a chance to get the rest of your thoughts out. So go ahead. Yeah, I believe it's more of an attitude problem. In other words, the people that I encounter in the service industry now believe that we, the customers, owe them, that their employers owe them, that they don't have to work, that they should be just given a lot of things. And I think the culmination of that has been the attitude that you've seen show up with the Occupy Wall Street and so forth. But it's it's not something that before Gen X was really that prevalent, so it's not a young person's type of thing. I think it has to do a lot with uh, people feel that they're entitled versus that they need to, to work hard and give back and be there for someone else. It's it, it's a just a really a full attitude kind of a thing. I I and, totally. You know, I worked in my share of, of retail and and fast food and so forth. And you put on a mask, and you be pleasant, and you be present. Uh, you know, make sure that that other customer coming in, no matter what they feel like, feels happy and thankful that they came into that to that store, to that place, a hotel or wherever. It, it, people don't do that nowadays. It, it just doesn't happen. I think that I think the most poignant point that you made is just that like they feel entitled, and this is the same thing that we see with basically as elections go by, as they as we talk about economic news with millennials. I mean, it's it seems to have gotten worse by the generation, hmm. you know, in in this country, and you know, indeed in the world. Well, right? because I mean, don't the uh, don't a lot of the people in the so-called greatest generation feel entitled to? I mean, they're collecting social security. Isn't that the same mentality? Just among well, elderly people. On the situation where it was like a savings account, like they they were told that they have to sock away a part of their money away that they could have spent on other things, and then they would it would be paid back to them that the government while the government held that money that it would go to work like a bank takes your money and deposits and goes to work and creating capital and loans like that. Well, that's not what happened with the government. So the government has actually betrayed the greatest generation, but that's what the greatest generation was sold to about by those programs and what they thought that it was going to be. It might have been how they were sold the program in the first place, but then again, what happened was they started putting that money into that account, and mm-hmm. then the greatest generation turned around and told the government to spend 
money. And that's, you know, sort of the, the thing here I, I think is p- important to understand that, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I think that's a great point, right? That, that, these folks went and said, hey, let's go, uh, let's have the government sort of, you know, force us to save money, which is uh, delegating responsibility out to somebody else who is a notoriously, notoriously irresponsible party, the state, right? And then you uh, say, hey, government, I'm not responsible enough to handle my own money. Why don't you handle my money for me? And then you tell the government, hey, you've got all this money. Why don't you spend it on stuff that I want? Well, right, because, I mean, if you look at elections, obviously elderly people are the one who the ones who are voting uh, for the most part. People over the age of 65 are far more likely to vote, uh, in my experience, than people under the age of 65 or certainly under the age of 45. Yeah. And, uh, and many of these guys, I mean, I lived in Florida for 26 years of my life, and I paid attention to the elections down there, and and these old folks would vote for any damn thing that they put on that ballot. Any of the ballot measures in Florida, they would put on uh, ballot measures, but in Florida, they couldn't do it through some sort of normal ballot measure process. In Florida, they actually would amend the Constitution with every one of their ballot measures. So the ban wow. on smoking cigarettes in public places in Florida, or the, uh, the, the ban on smoking them in restaurants and things like that, that came about through a ballot measure, which then amended the Constitution. And 70% of Floridians, which is you know mostly older folks, voted uh, for this thing. So I think there's plenty of examples well, I'm, of— I'm going to disagree with you in, in the respect that the greatest generation was doing that because they said, okay, government spend money, spend money, spend money. What the greatest generation thought was, was number one, it was a savings account, and number two— I'm not talking about not a savings ones, account. I'm talking it, about old people voting I, for I know, I know, I cigarette that, bans. But that's what they thought. But they're, yes, and, and I believe that they were right in that respect. But what I'm telling you, you believe is that, that people should, be, you believe that cigarettes should be banned. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I could go into a whole evening's discussion about that. But that's you. spending so, money, you know that, right? So, like, when you're asking for, don't, don't, don't tell me that you didn't ask the government to spend money when you told the government to do stuff, though. Do you understand that? Yeah, if you want to ban I smoking, that it costs money. Is huge and should not be that huge. It should be one eighth the size. It should just it be big today. enough to ban smoking. Right. You want you want the government to cut back in the areas you think it should cut back in, but you want it no, to increase in the areas you want it to increase. Very wasteful. It's very wasteful. We spend way like you. So if said, you were in charge, the, then the, Scott, the you'd agency slim. Could not could not uh, uh, manage you know people's money correctly. The state is not an efficient source of doing much of anything. But the you believe they're efficient at banning smoking. things. The purpose of government... <laughs> Do you understand the contradictions the coming out of, of your mouth? To protect my rights and to keep me from... What, what about the smokers' rights? You don't that care about the them. Only- I am allergic to cigarette smoke, so if you oh. smoke, so then go to a non-smoking me, restaurant. Do you believe in markets? Know. So put some people in and jail, then, believe. right? Because somebody smoked a cigarette, put that person in jail. No, keep them away from me in public places. Yeah, he doesn't even put the math together. Well, the, you, 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 the way that you're keeping them away from you in public places is by threatening them with imprisonment and death, sir. Do you understand how government works? You just said that it doesn't do things efficiently, but somehow you think it's going to protect your health. <laughs> I say government is only here to protect my rights and keep me from infringing on yours. You don't have any rights. That is the only purpose of government. You don't have any rights. God has given us a whole sequence of rights, and the only thing government can do is take rights rights away. Scott, thanks for the call tonight. Yeah, toll free number it, is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You never can trust those people who claim they're for smaller government because almost every one of them, at least those who you know tend to tout it from the Republican side of things, uh, almost all of them have their own government program that yeah. they want to see happen. Oh well, I don't think government should do X, Y, and Z, but it really needs to do A, B, and C because government will work good when my people are in charge of it. Yeah, because I. I'm so smart that I can figure out how to run this monster. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's ban some more stuff. Put some more people in prison. That'll fix things. Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. 
In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show here at username lra.fm. You just have to send a contact request. You'll be approved. And then once you're approved, you can call on Skype. And then you'll probably sound a lot better than you would if you called on the phone. With you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. And Cantwell. ChristopherCantwell.com is his website. You can go and check that out. He's been blogging recently. And... And uh, yeah, we'll continue with discussing Bill Cosby here in a moment. Is he an is he a rapist? Do you think Bill Cosby actually committed rape? And now all these old allegations have been surfacing recently, and we can talk more about that. But what we've been discussing has been millennials and whether or not millennials actually have a lower uh, kind of work ethic 
than generations that have come before. We had a caller a moment ago who said that he thought that not only did millennials have a poor work ethic, but also Gen X uh, has a poor work ethic. But he didn't believe that really applied to the generations that came before that. And then I pointed out, well, wait a minute, what about the uh, these elderly folks out there who are always begging government for some new favor? Or when some sort of government program is threatened, these uh, elderly folks come out in droves to oppose that, that government program being shut down. Watching uh, elderly voters vote constantly for more government programs, for instance. Yeah, and he sort of pitched it. And, you know, look, yeah, as Social Security was originally pitched to them, it was supposed to be some kind of a savings account. But with what they're getting out of it at this point, there's no way that they ever would have gotten that much money out of a savings account. I'm sorry to tell you, folks, it's the whole point of this thing is it's a Ponzi scheme. And, you know, are you the greatest generation if you fell for a scam as big as Social Security and then you, like, let this happen, right? Right, you were you were pitched this uh, this uh, savings account, and then they uh, you know spent it on a war or two, mm-hmm. and uh, and then they're like, hey, we'll pay for all your prescription drugs and all your medicine and all of your medical care, and uh, by the way, we'll give you housing and everything else. Like, what did you think was going to happen when you said, hey, give me stuff? Did you think that it was going to work out? Well, no. And now your kids are screwed and they're in debt and this is the world that you live in. Are things really that bad with the millennials? I mean, the, we haven't even really gotten into the story here yet. We can do that. I've got it pulled up from MainStreet.com about millennials and you know not really so much caring about the job world. Maybe millennials have figured it out. Jobs suck. I mean, who wants to have a job? Jobs are where you're generally working for the man or working for somebody else who's not necessarily you, meaning that, yeah, you get a paycheck, an hourly paycheck or a salary, but ultimately your efforts are primarily going towards the person who owns the business or the people who own the business. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with that. It's just not an optimal situation. Like, you know, optimally, you should be working for yourself, meaning that you should create some sort of product or service and offer that to the marketplace and, you know, offer it at a good price and a good value and you know, people will give you business and you can not have to ever answer to anybody except for your customers in that particular case. That's yeah. optimal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, it's optimal if you have the resources and aptitude to do it, though. But then, you know, the thing, you know, I mean, I tried it on my own as like an IT consultant in New York, right? Mm-hmm. I worked for a firm. I worked for a number of different firms and and I had a pretty, like, decent career in New York and I went and I tried it out on my own as, as an independent contractor and I had mixed success with that right sure because the thing is i'm a very good it guy i'm actually like a pretty good manager i'm not a good sales guy you know so if you got if you've got sales and management and the discipline to work from home or you know the the capital to get an office or whatever it is i mean all those things come together it's very good for you to work for yourself if you go to try to work for yourself and you're a guy who should be working a fast food counter well then you're not going to be a very successful businessman sorry to tell you i get your point there i don't know i don't know if i believe that millennials are necessarily worse at a work ethic than uh, than older generations it may just be because they're young you know it's um, no i think i think that you know to, to to hear my parents tell it anyway, right? My parents said that, like, it's the craziest thing in the world to them. Like, even when I was a kid, that, like, I questioned authority, right? Like, mm-hmm. they were just, they were raised, you know, in religious households where all the authority figures, whether it was the doctor or the teacher or the, the policeman, the politic, you were, you people told you to do things and they were just authority figures. And it was amazing to my mother, even, like, my, my brother had, like, eye problems, right? My, my, my brother had some really serious problems with his eyes. He was legally blind for a period of time. Mm. And And, you know, he went to doctors and the doctors sort of like gave him some information. And my mother's, you know, opinion is just do what the doctor tells you to. But my brother's got a lab coat. Yeah. So my my brother goes and like starts researching the condition that he has and then going and giving feedback to the doctor and saying, I think you're incorrect about this. And here's Mm. why. And actually correcting doctors. And my mother's like, this is amazing. You can't speak to a doctor that way. But actually like helped his eye condition. He might have been blind today if he hadn't. Well, what you're saying is then that's a good thing, right? To you're saying old. Older generations may have been more respectful of authority. They they were more respectful of authority. However, there's ups and downs to this, right? Because I don't think that there's any respect for any type of authority now, right? So, like, the, the thing is, like, people will do what the government tells them because they feel like they sort of have to, right? Well, it's but, out of fear. But they but they don't they don't respect authority in the sense of, like, they show up and there's a boss and the boss is telling them what to do. And he's like, mm. who do you think you are to tell me what to do? And he's like, I'm the guy who signs your paycheck, you loser. <laughs> We'll come back with more on this here and get into the story. But first, your calls and thoughts. Eric is in Grand Forks. You're on Free Talk Live, Eric. Hey, guys. Love the show. Hey, are we on the radio there in Grand Forks right now? 
Yep, you are. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. I thought they were going to take us off the air. Go ahead with your thoughts. <laughs> Whew, rescued. Well, I, I guess I was just going to ask you guys, what is it you think government should be? I, I don't know if I've ever actually heard you say it. I just kind of found your show fairly recently. Well, um, welcome to the program. I, what, what do you think government should be? Thanks. Well, well I, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you linger longer. Uh, what I would say to you is not what I think government should be. What I think government is is an excuse to do harm, right? It's an excuse to do bad things because the, the, the difference between you, me, and somebody who calls themselves the government is the government claims the authority to use violence to accomplish its goals, to initiate force, and to deceive people, whereas like the rest of us don't have – the uh, you know the lawful th authority to do that, if you will. So my and what I say the government is, I don't think the government actually exists. It's an excuse to do harm. The government is not like a a building or a person or a group of people or a document. You can't point at it. You can't touch it. It doesn't exist. It's an excuse to do things that normal people can't do. And it's not okay. Yeah, it's, and it's I not agree. okay. I agree. So the thing is, I think that we're all, I think like naturally, you know, I just think that the way things are or should be anyway is that, look, we, nobody nobody has any rights that anybody else doesn't have, if you will. And I don't even necessarily believe in the concept of rights, but just the, the way that we should interact with each other. Is, I like the concept of rights. I mean, it's, it's a useful concept. It's a, it's, it's a useful verbiage if you will i guess like it's a useful like language tool but like i don't think that like a right like what do you have a list of rights or something like that no you know this is the problem so like people get the idea that they have the right to free speech and then that means like they can go into somebody else's house and go yell at them no it's not how it or works or their business or something like that you know? sure so i mean i would say i would say that uh you know, the 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 idea of rights is a is a thing that I think has gotten really screwed up too. People think they have a right to a paycheck, they have a right to food stamps, they have a right to housing, they have a which right which means to, they would have a right to other people's labor. Right, exactly. That's not okay. So, so the idea being that you know your your basic right, as far as I'm concerned, is to to own yourself. You you are your own person, and the, you own the products of yourself. I think you have. I, I think there's some basic rules that I I wouldn't mind following. One, I won't do any harm to anyone else. And two, I'll honor my agreements. And that's really all I think you need. I don't think you need tomes and tomes and tomes of law books trying to determine what's legal and what's not, what's right and what's wrong, etc. And if, you know, if we want to talk about an ideal government, then it would be self-government to me. Uh, that would mean that you are in charge of your own life. And if you want to hire somebody to tell you what to do, there's plenty of people out there who would be happy to be hired to tell you what to do. Some self-styled experts would be happy to take your money from you and then give you some sort of regimen. You know, personal trainers do this for a living. Right. Uh, so, you know, let's let people make their own government so long as they're consensual. I don't mind. But the problem with government as we know it today, the problem with the state uh, is that it is a, a non-consensual situation that is being forced on people. So, Eric, did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. It did. Thank you for that. I, you know, I totally agree. But here's, here's the thing, though. What, what do you do with the people who are truly dangerous. You elect I mean, them. I agree with you. I like the <laughs> that's, that's what you do. You elect them. You yeah, put them like in them. Congress and... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Eric. We can address that. We'll come back with it uh, here in moments. What do you do? The idea being that you know there's some dangerous people out there, and if we don't have the state around, wouldn't they be able to just start killing and raping? 855 450 Like Bill free. Cosby. It's free. <laughs> free talk live. We're coming up. Mirror, mirror on the wall. How did I become so fat? If you're a woman over 40 and you're having trouble losing extra weight, please call the Amberin Hotline now at 1-800-959-4261. After 40, your body changes, and so should your weight loss strategy. At Amberin, we specialize in breakthrough solutions specifically tailored to women over 40, including hormonal balance, relief from menopausal symptoms like hot flashes. And you can lose pounds of stubborn extra weight in just weeks with Amberin Weight Loss. Right now, through this special radio offer, you can get a 100% risk-free trial. Just call 1-800-959-4261 now. So if you're a woman over 40 and you're tired of looking in the mirror and not liking what you see, call the Amberin Hotline today. Hurry. This limited time 100% risk-free offer won't last forever. Call 1-800-959-4261. That's 1-800-959-4261. 
Again, 1-800-959-4261. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything by dialing in toll-free. We'll talk more about the millennials and Bill Cosby not necessarily as a together as a topic, but those are two of the things that are already on the table for discussion tonight. Yeah, not so sure about where that generation gap line is drawn, but it's somewhere between me and Bill Cosby. Our toll-free number, you can join us here, is 855-450-FREE. ISIS crisis or just more hype? Antiwar.com has the answers, the facts, and the readership. What Antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve printing press and the mainstream media on their side. And all antiwar.com has is you. Their staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. And they're committed to keeping the website online with the best of the worst of all the bad news. But they can't do it for free and they can't do it without you. They need your donation at antiwar.com slash donate. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, by the way. That's antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. We've got Eric with us listening in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Eric, you're back on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris 
Cantwell. Uh, Eric, you had brought up a question sort of about what's, what is the view of the show's hosts? What is the view about government in general? Just kind of lay it out there. And we did that earlier. I pointed out that self-government was my ideal situation where you're in control of your own life and there's not some other stranger out there telling you or a group of strangers telling you how that you need to live. Um, and then you, that led you to this question about, uh, you know, what about the scary people? What about the dangerous people? And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but was that kind of what you were asking? Right. You know, I like what you said about uh, essentially no damage to person, no damage to property, no crime. And, you know, I like that idea, but obviously there's a lot of people out there who do not think the same way. Sure, um, like the police and you know, politicians. I mean, it, well, right. I, yeah, I know. I, I, they're the, I think the cops are the most dangerous bunch of people uh, that you can find. In any I've got society, another article but, tonight about the police throwing another gr- grenade inside a baby's room. I mean, that's, it's happened again. Uh, during a during a home raid, so yeah, I mean, the real threat to me, at least here in New Hampshire, there's not much actual crime that that happens here. It's I mean, because we have guns, right? New Hampshire is a relatively gun uh, sort of liberty oriented zone as far as guns are concerned, and there's not a whole lot of violent crime here. But my real threat, the threat to me and my life, is from the government. Uh, that's who I'm. You know, if I'm going to be scared of somebody, that's who I should be afraid of. They're the ones who actually have put me in a cage, and you too, Cantwell, yeah, uh, as well. So you know, they're the real threat. But it's still a good question. So let's let's give it a good answer here. What uh, Chris, you know, could be done in a world without the state about a murderer, for instance, or a rapist? Well, it's it's difficult for me to explain this very quickly because it's sort of an economics argument, right? What, what I think that you, if you understand, if you if you study economics at all, if you study free market economics, what you you generally tend to find is that the market does things better than the state can, right? Because the state has no incentive to do anything good because their customers can't fire them, right? The mm-hmm. state you takes, have to keep paying. The state takes your money by force, and if you don't like what they're doing, then they will kill you, right? I mean, they'll threaten to kill you and put you in a cage. They'll try mm-hmm. to take some money from you, but ultimately, every the penalty is always death because if you resist them, they'll kill you. So my, right. my thought process is basically like, look, yeah, I believe that in the absence of the state, people would want pr- police protection, and the evidence of that is that they tolerate the state, right? The people want it. They're willing to pay for it. And a lot of people don't have a problem with paying taxes. So I imagine that, let's just say that, you know, Barack Obama gets on television tomorrow and says, hey, I've been reading ChristopherCantwell.com and this whole government thing is garbage. We quit, <laughs> right? Let's like, just imagine this happens and there's no more government tomorrow. And there's a whole bunch of people who want protection and there's a whole bunch of police out of work at the same time. Well, you have a demand for protection. There's a bunch of guys who thought that they were protecting people their whole lives. They need a job. So you hire them to do the job. And it's just like any other business Mm -hmm. at at that point. There's a neat uh, company to look at, Eric. You might want to pull up information or look up Threat. uh, Was it Threat Management Services, I think they call themselves, out of Detroit? Do I have that wrong? I don't don't know the outfit you're talking about. I mean, I I, I commonly refer to these industries as dispute resolution agencies or dispute resolution organizations, and and I I imagine it would be tied to some kind of an insurance policy. Yeah, it is threat management in Detroit. uh, The guys from CopBlock, actually Pete Ayer, one of the founders of CopBlock.org, went to Detroit and uh, I think it was with Garrett Ian, actually, from uh, the Robin Hooders here in Keene. They both went to Detroit, and they met with the threat management guy. And what he's doing is, you know, Detroit, as you may know, is sort of falling apart at the seams. Uh, the government still exists there, but there are certain parts of Detroit where the government police, they're just not going to go. If you call the police from these areas, they're just not going to show up. And so people have been arming themselves. There have been more uh, defensive shootings that have happened in Detroit as a result of the police not being around and People just taking, you know, their own safety into their own hands. And if you, you know, if you don't trust your own abilities to defend yourself, and there's a lot of people who can't do that, they don't have the training, then you would want to hire somebody. And Threat Management Services has been doing that there for a long time now, and they offer different levels of service, right? So they offer the kind of level of service of 24-hour bodyguard protection all the way down to patrolling a neighborhood, that kind of thing. Uh, So there's different levels of that. They'll actually train you as well how to defend defend yourself. So there's different services they offer as a business to the community. And uh, and they, they seem to be doing well because they're still at it. Yeah. And, and the number one thing that I want to get across here before, before we get into anything else is just that uh, 
you know, in the, the places where you have the highest violent crime in this country and in the world is where the guns have been taken away. OK, mm-hmm. we don't we really don't have violent crime to speak of in New Hampshire. Yes, it happens, but it's extraordinarily rare. Usually when you hear about a shooting, the police are involved. We have guns here. Yeah. You don't need a license to open carry. It's ten dollars to get a concealed carry permit, which I think is an atrocity. But, hey, it's easy enough to do. Um, and so, you know, people don't uh, an armed society is a polite society and the government is the only one who's taken away guns. Eric, your thoughts? Yep, absolutely. I agree. I'm, I'm all for self-defense. Um, you know, but like I say, not, not everyone is necessarily going to be able to do that for themselves. And, um, yeah, I like what you said. What bugs me the most is that my radio station will, uh, Cut in with the football games and uh, oh, damn football take you guys games. off. So that just drives me nuts. Well, do me a favor, Eric, and call uh, KNOX. Call the program director there in Grand Forks. Talk to whoever that is at the moment and uh, tell them thanks for airing Free Talk Live. Because I'll tell you, uh, there, you know, we've been doing this show for over a decade. We have over 150 radio stations, but some of them come and some of them go. And uh, KNOX contacted me not too long ago. And they said they were pulling the show off the air. And, in fact, that, that deadline has passed now. They, I thought they had pulled us off the air. So I'm elated to know that we're still on. And the reason why that, you know, that was cited that we were being pulled off the air was because we talked too much about New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, it's it's true. We do the show from New Hampshire. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening. A lot of fun stuff here. In Literally. New Hampshire. And uh, and I feel like that we can take what happens here and make it understandable and relatable and, and entertaining. And I think that the fact that, you know, we're still on over 150 radio stations who don't have a problem with that uh, is an indicator that we do do that successfully. So maybe getting some positive feedback from the listeners there would help them, uh, you know, help us keep our position. And yeah. I appreciate your call tonight, Eric. Thanks for making it. I think so, too. And the other thing, uh, and I, I hope uh, Eric can, has turned his radio back on because, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't pan out, you can still get us on TuneIn. You can still yeah. get us on LRN.FM. I mean, if you like the show and, you know, the market near you doesn't have it, you, you can still get Free Talk Live in a number of different venues. Absolutely true. In fact, if you really want to go all out, uh, LRN.FM offers both satellite and Internet delivery. You could actually set up your own transmitter. If you really wanted to get the word of freedom out there as far and as wide as possible, you could do an FM broadcast in whatever town you live in. And This is not legal advice. It's not strictly <laughs> legal to do this, but uh, it's something you can do if you want. And the risks, honestly, are fairly low. I mean, all things considered, uh, unless you live in a place like Florida, and I forget which other state, it might be New York, uh, but there's there's at least one state, I know for sure, Florida has outlawed pirate radio. But in, that they have local laws against it, whereas like here in does. New Hampshire, yeah. it's just federal law that you're dealing with. Correct. In fact, not even really federal law as much as regulation, regulation uh, FCC regulation. So the FCC, if they catch a pirate radio station or community radio or whatever you want to call it, an unlicensed radio station, they'll usually go in and take the equipment, issue what's called a notice of apparent liability, which says, we believe you, Chris Cantwell, are operating a pirate radio station at this frequency, at you know, this location, and you need to stop or prove that you're legal licensed to do so and uh, if you don't stop there is some speculation that they will never actually send the fine that they issue to you for collection so along with that notice of liability they'll also issue you a ten thousand dollar fine uh or some thereabouts some number like that and they'll give you very easy methods that you can use to pay the fine like credit card or you know cut them a cashier's check they'll give you different solutions for that <laughs> uh, but if you don't actually pay the fine now this is what i read according to uh, stephen dunifer who's been doing pirate radio out in berkeley california for i don't know like forever uh, for decades. And so this guy presumably has done his research. He says the FCC's never sent one of those to collections. The reason why they, uh, what they have to do to collect it is they have to have the Justice Department bring a civil suit against the operator in order to collect that $10,000 fine. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper that they send you. They, they got some pieces of paper from government like the IRS to get some people pretty jammed up. I well, there's that, there's that as well. But I'm just saying, I don't think anybody who's ever not paid that fine has ever been forced to by the courts because they've never taken it to court. So I hear. We're coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. 
if he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.28 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $379. Antiwar.com reports the USA Freedom Act, originally the stronger of two Senate NSA reform bills, but watered down to the point of irrelevance, has failed a procedural vote and will no longer be considered until January at the earliest. The motion to bring the bill to a vote in the Senate needed 60 votes to pass, but only got 58, with 42 opponents. The opposition came from both sides, with surveillance critics saying the bill was too weak to bother with, and surveillance advocates who did not want any reform bill, even a token one. This was reflected in both Kentucky Senators Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell voting against bringing the bill to the floor for exactly opposite reasons. The defeat means the bill is effectively dead until the new Senate takes office, and with a much more hawkish bend, it will likely be hard for any reforms to get past them. At the same time, they likely won't be as supportive of the pretense of reform as the backers of this bill were. This may be good news in the long long run, as it will at least keep the question of mass NSA surveillance of American citizens in the public eye, and without any ability for the administration to claim a bill has nominally resolved the matter. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. USA Today reports the U.S. Senate defeated a bill to authorize construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, delivering a blow to Senator Mary Landrieu by members of her own party. Landrieu told reporters after the vote, I came here 18 years ago fighting to get here, fighting to stay here, and I'm going to fight for the people of my state until the day I leave. I hope that will not be soon. By a narrow 59-41 to 41 vote, the bill failed to overcome a 60-vote threshold for overcoming a procedural hurdle. All four 
45 Republican senators voted for it, 13 Democrats voted with Landrew, but Landrew could not clinch the necessary last Democratic vote. Landrew is locked in a December 6th runoff against Congressman Bill Cassidy. The pipeline vote has become a political issue in the race, where the state's oil and gas industry is supportive of the pipeline's construction, and both candidates are avid supporters. The 1,200-mile proposed crude oil pipeline would help connect existing pipelines from Canada to the Gulf Coast, and would use eminent domain to do so. The House passed mirror legislation last week, sponsored by Cassidy, who is favored to win the Senate race because of the conservative lean of the state. If Landrew had succeeded, it was likely to be more of a political exercise because White House spokesman Josh Earnest made clear the president does not support the bill, suggesting a likely veto if it had hit the desk. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports a small group of Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters broke into the city's legislature via a side door early on Wednesday, and police stopped others forcing their way in as tensions in the Chinese-controlled city escalated following a period of calm. The flare-up came just hours after court bailiffs managed to clear up part of a protest camp in the heart of the city that had been occupied by pro-democracy demonstrators for nearly two months, while leaving most of the main protest site intact. About one 100 riot police with helmets, batons, and shields stood guard outside the government building in the early hours of Wednesday, facing off with protesters who are demanding free elections for the city's next leader in 2017. It was the first time protesters had broken into a key public building, defying the expectations of many political analysts who had predicted that Hong Kong's most tenacious and protracted protest movement would slowly wind down. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Americans across the nation made their voices heard this week as they demanded more mind-blowing guitar solos. Calling for the solos to be, quote, face-meltingly cool and go on for well over 10 minutes, Americans stressed that all guitar solos from now on should be equally as kick-ass as those in Van Halen's Hot for Teacher and ACDC's Thunderstruck, or even better. It should start out really slow, you know? and then get faster and faster until they're all the way up at the top of the guitar neck and bending the notes like crazy. So it's like And then there's all this awesome pyrotechnic stuff going off in the background. They should all be like that. And in this week's local news, a report noted that on its surface, Glenbrook, Ohio is a small town like any other, a peaceful all-American town. And yet, the report's authors added, if you only look closer, what you find may surprise you. In other news, the man is just having one of those decades where he doesn't feel like doing anything. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, whether it's Bill Cosby and the rape allegations, which we haven't gotten the details on yet, uh, or millennials allegedly being less interested in uh, keeping a job, for instance, than generations previous to them, or pirate radio. We'll talk about anything here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And join us via Skype at username L. RN.FM. The us tonight includes me, Ian. And Chris Cantwell. We will go right into your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Matt in Orlando, Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matt. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, how are you? Go ahead, sir. Good. I had a question for you guys. I'm really confused. Uh, hopefully you can sort it out for me. I'm confused as to whether it is really easy or really hard to lose your job as a police officer. It is really I hard. Have- why are you okay, confused so by have, that? Well, here's the thing, because I've run into police officers on the street doing, you know, what have you, uh, you know, driving, whatever, gotten tickets for minor infractions, t- stuff that's just nonsense, and I try to, you know, appeal to the guy's better nature, and they say, look, man, I'm just doing my job. And I think the presumption there is that if they weren't to do that job, there'd be repercussions, 
probably, you know, ultimately them losing that job. So it seems like they're very worried about losing their job when it comes to, you know, minor stuff, street level, you know, enforcing minor codes and traffic violation stuff. But you read about it all the time with these troubled cops killing people, raping women on the side of the street, whatever, that the police unions make it impossible for the police force to fire these guys. So I, I, I can't just I can't marry these two concepts. Is it hard or is it easy to lose your job as a cop? It's it's actually very easy to lose your job as a cop. And the way that you do it is you quit. Right. So it's not like a difficult thing for this guy to stop robbing people on the sides of highways and assaulting people and kidnapping people and shooting dogs. It's not a difficult thing for him. He's got kids to put through college. He's got to put food on the table. A lot of people need food. A lot of people need food. He doesn't need to (laughs) rob people on the side of the highway. You don't rob liquor stores and say, I'm just doing my job. You know, when when he busts a drug dealer, when he, he, you know, some some guy is, uh, you know, trying to make a few bucks to feed his family and he goes to to sell some weed uh, to his pals and he goes and locks him up and gets his kids taken away from CPS, the drug dealer doesn't get to say, hey, I was just doing my job. So the, the answer is that guy's a piece of crap. Okay. It's an excuse for cowardice. I mean, that's ultimately what it is. There are, you know, th- there's always these claims out there that, oh, well, you know, the, it's just a few bad apples. But as has been pointed out a number of times here on Free Talk Live, it, where are the damn good apples? I mean, shouldn't they be out there arresting the bad apples? If there are actually good cops out there, shouldn't they be targeting the bad ones and bringing them to justice, supposedly? But they don't do that, which is that's either suggests there are no good apples or that the good cops are just totally scared of these bad cops and aren't willing to do anything about it. But when a cop's using the excuse of, oh, it's just my job, or, you know, I don't want to get hurt by my boss or something like that, then that's just an excuse for him doing the wrong thing and cowering, essentially. And it's it's funny to call the cops cowards because they don't want to be seen in that way, but there's a lot of things that they, uh, they're they cowardly about. But just to, to answer your, que- your initial question, uh, from what I understand, the way the system works is that when you get hired as a police officer, when you get through the academy or whatever, once you get the job as a cop, that there is a probationary period wherein it is easier to fire someone. And it's in that probationary period where the cop has to be very, very careful to not step on anybody's toes in the department because he actually could lose his job. So, for instance, the the idea of the liberty person, like the person who believes in freedom becoming a cop, they would have to get through that probationary period to where they then lock in tenure, for lack of a better term. Once they get through that probationary period, you know, it becomes very, very difficult to fire them. That's when you could probably easier get away with, you know, not uh, arresting somebody for a bag of pot or something like that. But in that probationary period, you better do everything you're told by the higher ups or else you might actually lose the job. Right. You've got to prove your loyalty to the gang when you join it, right? right? And if you don't prove your loyalty to the gang, then they will jump you out. And so, you know, there's, but at, the, at once they're in, I mean, it's like they're, you know, they're union members. I think almost, I don't know if all police, uh, police forces are unionized, but I think the vast Many majority of them, of them are. Certainly in bigger cities yeah so i mean you just think about even if you work at a supermarket and you know you catch people doing all types of ridiculous things and they're union members and then it's difficult to fire them at a supermarket when they actually have the force of the state on their side when they're running around locking people up and shooting people for a living then you might imagine that you know it's a little bit more difficult to fire the guy in the murder union matt your thoughts uh, no, I, I agree completely, and I, I hear a lot of people, uh, mostly you know, on the conservative side of the aisles, talking about uh, you know how dangerous and terrible the teachers' unions are. And I'm no fan of public service uh, unions to begin with. Mm-hmm. But it's funny; I find that you don't really hear the same folks talking about the police unions, which, as you guys just pointed out, are protect all sorts of and shelter all sorts of horrible, murderous, violent thugs. I'd say you're right about that, Matt. Thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, to give a little bit more of an example of what could happen to a police officer while they've after they've gotten through that probationary period, once they're kind of in like Flynn and they really can't be gotten rid of, the only things that can really happen to them, from what I understand, uh, for you know most of the things that they might do as a you know as far as disobeying their author- the so-called authorities, disobeying the captain or whoever, would be that they could be put them you know put them on an undesirable shift. 
So if they like to work daytime hours, they could be put on overnights as punishment for not doing what they were told. You know, they may be docked overtime. This is something that police really enjoy, usually getting the overtime because they already get paid fairly well. And when they get overtime, <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah. Um, so if they're on the outs with management, so to speak, they'll probably not be given chances to get the overtime hours. So there are some things that can be done to them once they get past that probationary period. But but firing them tends to be very, very difficult. In fact, if you look at stories about cops being really bad, in a lot of cases, if if a cop actually gets fired, which hardly ever happens. I mean, they can rape and molest and yeah. and murder and in a lot get of cases. An early retirement and a pension, with and it. get a badge. You know, get a uh, get some sort of an award or something yeah. like that. We've seen all that happen. But every now and then, they'll do something that's just so egregious and gets you know caught on video to where even the captain can't make any excuses for it and they'll have to fire a cop this happens like once a year maximum it seems like but they'll fire that cop and they'll get hired by another department halfway across yep. the state yep we've we've seen that more than a few times and that is one of the most obscene things and then you hear about that guy again committing some case Later of abuse, on. and then you hear the story the backstory like oh he was fired from this other department for being a complete piece of garbage and then this other department was like hey we don't mind pieces of garbage <laughs> running around with guns on our street yeah you go tell people what to do and take their money yeah they'll hire him and then promote him the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 let's go to david he He's in St. Charles, Illinois. David, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Just a couple quick questions. Yes, sir. Um, okay. I, I'm going to be needing some dental work, and I don't have dental insurance. And I mean, just health-related, I worry. I, I get enough income. I wouldn't qualify for assistance, but I'm trying to catch up on all kinds of bills, and I don't want to go bankrupt. Is there such thing as, like generously discounted dental work or mental, uh, medical uh, you know, care for people who earn enough to not qualify for assistance but can't afford it? I, I, it sounds a little weird, but <laughs> good question. I, I, I imagine it. I imagine it depends on where you live. I actually know somebody here in New Hampshire who's going to go get like a. He lost a filling, and he's actually going to go get a fix for like twenty bucks in Vermont. Is what I just. Where's he going to a school? I don't know the details of it. It's some kind of it's some kind of clinic, some kind of dental clinic. I don't so yeah, there may be some kind of uh, op options for poorer people. But you're saying you don't qualify as poor. You make just enough to be out of this that person's range. not poor either. Like mm -hmm. it was a no questions right. asked thing. That that like I don't understand it at all. They didn't even want ID or anything. Well, um, if it's if it's a dental school, then that can be the case, right? Yeah. Like where uh, it's sort of like haircutting schools. If you go in and you allow yourself to be cut have your hair cut by the trainee, uh, then you get a free haircut or whatever. But in uh, like the dental schools, I, from what I hear, they'll do the same thing where yeah. you get a discounted rate as long as you're willing to have the trainee do it while being seen over by you know, like somebody a half price knows what they're doing. But the, the, uh, in New York, they had walk-in clinics, too, is the other thing. And I don't know how much it's discounted. So depending on where you are, there may or may not be, but I can't speak to the market I'd say in your area. call around. I'd say call the different offices yeah. and ask. And uh, David, good luck. Thanks for the call tonight. And look at look at dental schools as well. Another yeah. option might be worth traveling for if you can get a good discount there. More coming up. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase, and there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450 free. Is Bill Cosby a rapist? We uh, will get into some of the details on the allegations here in a moment. Also, millennials, are they lazier than previous generations? More disrespectful to uh, the idea of keeping a job? We'll get into that as well. Your calls certainly are welcome about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and that is the Pro XPN toll-free line. That's 855-450-3733. Hey, do you have Bitcoin and are in need of a car? Well, New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that they've cared for in their rental fleet. Since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, then the auction fees and transport costs don't exist, so they don't get passed to you. Their cars are in great condition, and they're priced to move. They can ship them anywhere in the world, so go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and see what they have. They're looking to become the Bitcoin auto dealer, but obviously, if you see something you like and you don't have enough Bitcoin for it, they can help you there as well. With Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head over to their website or give them a call and and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership at NewAgeAutoSales.com. As we go to your calls and thoughts, Pete is on the line in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Pete. Well, you know, the reason why all these things have happened is because of the godlessness of society. Haven't you ever read the Second Commandment? It says up to the third and fourth generation will be cursed. 
because of the sins of the forefathers. That's why everybody has the same symptom, because it's a curse. This is, what are you talking this about? This is news to me. So can you tell me more? What symptom? What is he talking? I, what do you... Well, it's apparently yeah. the second and third generation are being cursed because we have not. Is it uh, which God is it that you're referring to, sir? Yahweh, Yahshua. Yeshua. Which gener- Hold on, I'm confused. Are we talking about the second and third generation from the writing of the Bible, from Jesus's existence, from the 19th, you know, the 20th century? Which generations are you talking about? Uh, give me some context here. In general, I don't know exactly when this started, but if you look at it, the same basic uh, curses have been passed down. I mean, look at okay, the the old people, then the baby boomers. Now it comes down to us, our the uh, the millennials. They had the same thing after. How old are you, Pete? Yeah, I don't think Pete's a millennial. 26. 26? I'm 26. Okay, you are a millennial. Yes. Interesting. So, okay, well, well, what, what is this I... curse? Uh, what, uh, tell me more about that. The curse says, look, read the second commandment in the Ten Commandments. It says that for idolatry, God will tear you to shreds. That's why we have the no work ethic. That You know, that's why we have the addiction to everything, including sports and video. That's why we support the police corruption and police brutality and that's why we don't care it's you it's interesting really care it's interesting that you say care. that though so do, what are you are you saying that the that the generation now the people of today the the these these millennials who think that they don't have to work a job for more than a year that they think that they've got everything coming to them that this isn't their fault that they're being cursed by god and they have no responsibility in the matter <laughs> well it's not just that it, you know that it's God's sovereign will for that to happen because the forefathers have disobeyed that. And that's okay, but do you understand that like, you just? But I, I just, I just want to like have like let's let's try to get the point across here. So what I'm asking you is that point. since they're cursed, I know that you want to talk. That's why you call here. You need to be heard. I understand. But listen, so you're saying that the the generation has been cursed, and I mean this has been going on for several generations, right? So they're cursed, and now they're behaving badly, and now will the next three generations be cursed because they behaved badly because they behave behaving badly because they were cursed? Well, I don't believe that there's I want be you to try look, Pete, we we've gone through this a couple of times and I'm really trying with you, buddy. I really want you to try and get through a logical thought process here and I know <laughs> that it's not easy for you, but I'm going to work with you, okay? I'm a pretty smart guy. I can help you with this. Let's just follow this oh, through to like its sarcasm. ultimate logical conclusion. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, I I'm being a little bit sarcastic. This is a radio show. I have to make it entertaining, but I'm really I'm really I'm trying to help you here, okay? So what you're saying is at some point in human history, the generation that just happened to be there was like, you know, hey, Yeshua, you're a swell guy, but go, go F yourself, right? And then they that's were exactly like... exactly what Israel did. And that's right. what Britain did, and that's what we've done. Right, and, and then so... But, but wait, but I understand that, and I totally... I'm with you. I'm following you. We're on the same path here. And then so they got cursed, and the second and third generations got cursed, and now we're looking at this third generation of fourth. people... And the fourth. Okay, the fourth then, okay? So we've got one more generation of people who's going to be cursed and irresponsible and lazy and violent and ruin their economy and kill millions of people, and then those people are going to produce a generation of good people after that. Is that your premise? That's not my premise. My premise is— I don't think you have of... one. Well, what is the premise? Oh, you've Go got ahead. jokes. Well, you know, in my college class, I took logic, and I'd kick you in the nuts. I'd debate you, and you, yeah, I'd win, and you'd So cry. did they teach you Ooh. that in your logic class, to kick your opponent in the nuts? <laughs> Is that no, what they taught you, know, you in honest, logic honestly, class? You, they taught you logic class when you were studying the Bible, Pete? <laughs> Hold on now, Craig. Look, Cantwell, I want to hear what Pete has to say. So, yeah, Cantwell, Cam- what, what are you saying? After the fourth generation, then what happens? I'm saying that, you know what, there's a way people, if the Lord gives them He's grace— He's got nothing. And, you know, and they choose to follow what the Lord wants, and, they, you know, then he'll, he will show mercy unto thousands and thousands and thousands of people. But because— But there's of, billions wait of a us. Minute. How, oh, okay, hold on. What I don't really understand about what he's saying here, uh, Chris, is that it sounds like Pete is using sort of this collective uh, mindset, right, Like the or this collectivist idea that, oh, well, some people were bad in this one generation, or enough of them were bad to where— Future generations have been cursed, and you know that because some people have been, uh, you know, a- anti-God or something like that, that no one in the other generations could possibly be pro-God because of this curse. I mean, why not judge people individually, Pete, and you know, look at each individual's decisions as to whether or not they get punished in the future? I'm, I'm really confused by where you're coming from here. 
There's always a remnant, but if you look at it, mo- it's, it's saying in general. That's what it's referring to. And, you know, look, our generation is cursed. Look what happened to the baby boomers. They were cursed because it was passed down to them, and what was passed down to their fathers was passed down to them. This is because of our so idolatry. So you're, you're not saying all of Generation X or the millennials are going to hell? I'm not saying all, but I'm saying the majority. I see. The majority. It's always a small. Jesus said uh, the narrow gate leads to heaven, but the broad gate leads to hell. I mean, now you believe that? you're going to heaven, but at the same time you advocate for hanging people. There's nothing wrong with that. That's called justice. You can't have mercy <laughs> and love without justice. You know what? Do you yeah, think but you want to hang people for having for sex with the same same gender. That's what it says. It says oh, don't it's an don't bait them with the homosexuality. Who else do you want to hang? Who who do you think should hang? We hang almost got high. through a call without him bringing up homosexuality, and then you I did it. I'm it not going to forgive you for that. I admit it. That's because I'm it, almost it, done with Peter. It, it, for it, for it, callers, for, for listeners who aren't you know maybe listening to the show every time right. he calls, like he calls here all the time and does this, and I don't want this to become like an inside joke, but it sort of is, but right? He he tells me that you're on the air, and I'm like, oh, I love this part of the show because you're my favorite. Guest, really? No, I mean maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, what's funny. his name in Arizona? James, James Witt. James in Arizona is a real swell guy. He's a little bit more entertaining than you. I don't know who's dumber, really, but maybe we could like get you guys on the. You guys should do a podcast together. Once really, upon I think a time, that would be amazing. We had. Hey, thanks, Pete, for the call tonight. Good luck. Yeah, I really do appreciate uh, it. Go. Once upon away. a time, we had uh, James from Arizona. On the air with Dave from New York. Oh, Dave from New York was is good too. Really awesome. That was a great call. Um, in fact, James tore him up actually. <laughs> so it would be interesting to hear James in Arizona go up against Pete in California. That one hasn't happened yet. You guys got to follow each other on Twitter or something. The toll free number here is 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. The Millennials, we can talk more about them coming up. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. They have to pass a law that all the guns that are currently there have to disappear in a puff of smoke. <laughs> That's what they have to do. Oh, wait, you mean the bad guys won't actually give up their firearms when the authorities come around well, no, to confiscate but it them? It doesn't really matter that they won't give up their firearms because we're going to pass a law. Oh, that... because we pass a law, they'll just all disappear. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, it's just amazing how powerful laws are. Yes. How just it's laws striking. aren't a bunch of dumb crap written on paper. They actually do something. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. What will be stupid is if they vote for y- it. Y- yeah, if it, Take taking our away guns. <laughs> y- you know, these criminals with the guns are going to kill people. Yeah, they you already know? are apparently. And if you don't have a weapon of your own, <laughs> you're just as good as dead. Once the laws go into effect that there shouldn't be any weapons anymore because then they know that the good people don't have weapons. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, you've got Ian. And Cantwell. Don't forget to check out more of Chris Cantwell on his website, ChristopherCantwell.com. What's uh, one of the latest articles that you've posted up there, Chris? The latest article I actually wrote was about this... uh Sue Social Network. Have you heard of this TSU? I had not heard of it until uh, just the other day when someone sent me an invitation. Okay. I have been getting bombarded with invitations to this thing. Thankfully, I've only received one. I am furious about this because I'm getting it. It's if you're if you're on Facebook frequently, I'm surprised that people aren't bombarding you with it because the bit is that the social network and it it sounds like a good idea at first, right? So they have this, uh, you know, we're on Facebook. Facebook's making billions of dollars off of us, and Facebook is screwing us up, down, and sideways, okay. right? So somebody gets this bright idea: Hey, I'm going to make a, a social network that's like Facebook, but we're going to cut you in on the ad revenues okay so like if you're a popular personality on the social network we're going to send you money that's a portion of the advertising revenue that we're making you from you based on the number of comments or likes or whatever the algorithm is right and so you know people are making pennies but it's it pennies, sounds ridiculous it's pennies more than you're making on facebook okay. but so what they also do there's like it's like an affiliate program too now so your profile is like an affiliate link like affiliate advertising if you're familiar with that i think you have that with uh, amazon for yeah, free talk sure. live right sure if you go to shop.freetalklive.com we get a cut of the sale exactly now what you could do if you were like a real piece of garbage right you could go and spam your amazon link all over the place right you could do this if you wanted to Mm. and amazon would eventually catch on and cancel your account and not give you any money well sue doesn't do that tsu.com or tsu.co they don't do that so what they do is say oh, invite your friends over to our social network and we'll give you a cut of the advertising revenue that we give them so if people are big social media personalities then they'll get bombarded with these things by all their friends and fans who are linking it in their comments and sending them messages i'm surprised i'm really shocked that this hasn't happened to you more because it's all over my things it's in my comments hey i'm over on this thing why don't you come over here and they're not telling me the reason they're doing it is because they're getting a pay day to do it so but i said wouldn't you find that out i mean when you were signing up do they pitch it as like yeah i mean you would i don't i never gone to the sign up form because i was just like why am i getting this spam like i mm-hmm. identify it as spam right away i'm like why are you linking other social networks in the comment loser because the thing is too like i would like a, a facebook alternative right like i would i really don't like what facebook's doing sure I'm, everybody I, would like a facebook alternative but when they come up and they you know like diaspora for instance right they just never really catch on i mean even google couldn't really compete 
with Facebook. Exactly. So, but you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get off of Facebook, if you wanted to encourage people to leave Facebook so that you have like a decentralized thing or something like that, Diaspora is a, a much better option for that because it's decentralized. You know, this is just another centralized thing that basically is offering you to, you know, pay you some pennies for for posting on social media. And so, in any case. You know, I worked as an abuse administrator for a major ISP in New York for an internet service provider for data center. And so I was in charge of dealing with spam complaints and stuff like that. And I take spam very seriously. And uh, and I tell people stop spamming me and they're talking to me about, well, it's free markets, it's capitalism. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, the free market says I'm going to disassociate from you because you're spamming, you loser. Get this off of my feed, you degenerate. So... I yeah I, I'm I'm, I'm skeptical a little all of this. over the place with yeah. it. I'm sorry. I know that because it's it's just something makes me angry. I'm skeptical of this, uh, and I you know having read your article, I thought it was very well done, um, and that is over at ChristopherCantwell.com about this website. Now, unfortunately, you know you've already given their URL out. Um, that gives them some level of promotion here, but I imagine people think they're going to get rich off this. Do they? Do you, do you think they're promoting that? Like usually, like multi-level marketing, it's like sign up three people who sign up three people, and you'll be a millionaire. I don't know that they're telling them they're going to make millions of dollars because I mean, like, so there's like memes about it, right? So I saw a meme that says like, oh, I made a penny on, um, you know, th this <laughs> this thing this week, but it's a penny more than you made on Facebook. Uh -huh. do. You know, so like, and and I don't know even like when they pay you out. Like, like I have discussed comments. On on my website and they pay me next to nothing right and like and and i only get paid 90 days after the balance reaches a hundred dollars mm -hmm. or something like that i get a lot more from adsense or whatever so um you know but uh, these things are ridiculous like it's probably forever before you even get a paycheck but some people are on social media so much that they're like whatever amount of money i get for this it's better than what i'm getting now mm -hmm. you know and if you're a person on face if you're the average facebook user i mean i don't know that the average facebook user is getting 10 or 15 likes on a post right so so if they go over there and they're like the new guy on the on the new social network and if they can get it, you know, some more people are in there, they're being told that they're going to make money, like they'll probably, they might get more attention than they're getting on Facebook right, right now, right? Because mm. Facebook's algorithms basically they have suck. them muted, right? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, there's a lot of good things to Facebook's algorithms, but I don't particularly care for them. But one of the things that it does do is it shows you things that are like interesting and relevant, whether, whether you think that they should be showing you other things or not, you know, but you have to, part of the thing with Facebook is it's like an edge rank system, right? And so What's that? the edge rank system is it judges your relevancy based on how many people are interacting with your content. And the more people who are interacting with your content, the more people Facebook will show the content to. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, the, and the more content, the more interaction you get, then the more interaction you get, because the more interaction you get, the more people see sure. it. And, and it, success it builds. breeds success. Right. Sure. Exactly. And so, like, look, I have a pretty high edge rank. You know, I post things and I get hundreds of likes on them. You know, you get a and, lot of comments. Yeah. yeah. And and most people don't get that. Right. So when they go on to a network that doesn't have that sort of system, it does like they, they get a little bit of an ego boost, too, because mm -hmm. now they're just being shown in line with everybody else there. You know, if somebody likes, you know, some somebody who doesn't have a big social media following and 50 cent. Right. They're going to see 50 cent and the guy who doesn't have any social media following at the same time. And that's kind of cool for people who haven't managed to build up that that reputation on social media before. So there's a lot of different motives to it. But I cannot I absolutely will not abide affiliate spam. And I can't stand that like spam is like people libertarians look at spam like, wow, it's free markets, man. And I'm like, we dealt with spam in a free market way through the ISPs. Congress tried to pass the Can Spam Act. They did all these <laughs> stupid things to try to deal with spam, and Congress was just completely incapable. Do they have no idea what they're even talking right. about? No, it was the techs. It was the IT guys who right. stopped spam. So people created blacklists and stuff like that. They said, you're a spam network. We're blocking you from the rest right. of the networks. They ostracized spammers, and it works remarkably, oh, yeah. and I mean, they do a really good job of it. Go take a look at your spam folder on, uh, if you've got Gmail, there's yeah. thousands of messages in there, and they're all filtered out, and it does a damn good job of it. Exactly, and that's all done by the market. It's not done by coercive government or central planners. It's done by people who are cooperating with each other, and that's, you know, one of the major indicators, I think, that you can say that a free society can solve problems, is that spam was huge, huge problem, and now, like, I don't even think about it for the most part, you know, and that's because we ostracize spammers, and I'm ostracizing this stupid degenerate TSU. network. TSU is what it's called. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450 free. Let's go to Martin. He's in Kansas City. Martin, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris Cantwell. Yes, hi. Hey, Martin. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I, 
I would like to address the news stories of the day, which I think we have a lot of problems in this country. Pick one. We only have time for one news story. What's the most important one to you? Well, I think it's fundamentally a problem of uh, people not thinking about how can they promote peace from a small community and then that small community has what? less problems. What does that have to do with the, with what news issue are you uh, specifically referring to? I mean, I'm all, I'm all in favor of promoting peace, but what are you commenting on? Well, I'm, I'm commenting especially on this uh, case in Missouri that's getting – that's just one particular problem. Ferguson. You're talking about the Ferguson situation? Yeah. Now, what would you like to way, say about that? Everyone's always looking for the police to solve their little community problems. Then – Obviously, they're not doing anything to solve the problem. I agree with yeah, that. That's that's absolutely true. And I, I don't know that I don't know that what you have I don't know that what you have in Ferguson is a situation where people are looking to the police to solve a problem as much as what you know. Certainly it's, not. Most people won't talk to the police for good reason. Yeah, they won't talk to the police for good reason. I in do, urban neighborhoods, I should clarify. Yeah, and so uh, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to to not uh, to not to talk to the police. But you know, you do have a situation down there, and which I fear, unfortunately, is a lot of like race baiting hysteria done by the liberal media. You and, also you wrote know, an article about this. Yeah, I uh, went today. off about this the other day. Hey, yeah. Martin, thanks for the call. We'll address it further here uh, in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Because I agree with what Martin was saying uh, in that if you choose to go to the cops or code enforcement or whatever to try to resolve issues with neighbors, bad outcomes. that's a terrible way to be a neighbor. Uh, there's more coming up here in moments. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. It's Lumber Liquidator's third annual yellow and black Friday flooring sale. Right now, get incredible end-of-year deals before they're gone. There's no better time to get hardwoods, like Brazilian Koa for an unheard of 40% off. And all bamboo is up to 30% off. Plus, our thickest and best laminates are 25% off our lowest prices. And get 26-month special financing. Even more deals are added daily in our stores. It only happens once a year. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Are you drinking too much and it's destroying your life? If you're ready to quit drinking, we have a real solution for you that can help you quit drinking within hours. That's right. We can help you quit drinking within hours. It's not magic. It's medical science. At Sober Time, we'll show you how this simple 20-minute outpatient medical procedure will turn off your cravings within hours. Let's face it. If you don't crave a drink, you're not going to drink. And if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. The medication is FDA approved and covered by most major insurance plans. So if you're really ready to stop drinking and get your life back, call Sober Time now for a free consultation. Patients have nearly an 85% success rate. So here's the number. Call right now. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You bring up what you want by dialing toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features there. We still uh, can talk more about the Bill Cosby rape allegations here in a moment. Plus, millennials, are they more shiftless, less interested in responsibility than previous generations? That was some of the discussion we had earlier here tonight. And our toll-free number, again, if you'd like to join us, is 855-450-FREE. Christopher Cantwell, you were saying that uh, you another article you wrote recently uh, – was about Ferguson. Yeah. So, you know, this this situation down there, a little backstory, I'm sure most of the listeners have heard about this, that this uh, this cop shot uh, what is described as an unarmed black teen. Right? Okay. An unarmed black teen who happened to have committed a strong-arm robbery. Is that just, confirmed now? Because yeah. I remember in the beginning of this case, I have to admit, I haven't been following the details as they've been developing, but I remember when it first came out, there was some question as to whether or not this the victim of the police shooting was, in fact, the person who ostensibly robbed the uh, the store. Yeah, so so the situation, as I understand it, goes something like this. So um, the... And this, it was confirmed. I mean, you've got videotape of the guy doing exactly what he's accused of doing. His surviving accomplice has talked about it with the media. Okay. You know, they said that they did this thing. And so some people describe whether or not it was actually a robbery because they, they, they apparently, like, took the cigars. I don't think they were old enough to buy the cigars. So they, they were uh, – the guy wanted ID, and they took the cigars and, like, paid for them anyway, even though the guy didn't want to give it to them. And some people were questioning whether or not that's a robbery and i say that's a robbery the same way taxation is theft the government doesn't get to like force a, a service on me and then take money away from me and just call that a payment it's not a it's not a it's not a voluntary interaction right okay. you go and you throw money at somebody and you take their stuff you rob them and if he tries to stop you from leaving the store and you push him which is exactly what these these boys did they that uh that's a strong arm robbery that's an assault and so they're walking down the street and the uh, the police officer approaches them, and what, as I understand it, the police officer did not know that they had committed this robbery. The, he was approaching them because they were like walking in the middle of the street or mm -hmm. something like that. And he may have been, you know, he might have been like belligerent with them or something like that. But in any case, you know, during this situation, these guys who had just committed a strong arm robbery went for the cop's gun. Okay, they they attacked the cop. And uh, and and tried to get his gun, and the cop pulled out his gun, and the cop shot this kid. Okay, and I'm not happy that the kid is dead, but I'm sorry when you commit a strong arm robbery and you go for a cop's gun. Let's not be surprised when you end up dead. If sure. if if Missouri did not have a 45 day waiting limit waiting period for a concealed carry permit, if it wasn't a hundred dollar fee, if they didn't require background checks and uh, weapons training prior to getting a concealed carry permit, if you know if somebody could just go have get a, a gun, gun, right? You know this guy might have been shot by the clerk, mm -hmm. and and I wouldn't be shedding a here for the boy you don't get to go around robbing people sure. you know in a free society there would be security agents who would probably be working for that clerk and if they went after him and he went for their gun he'd get his dumb face shot off and he would uh, you know i'm unfortunate that it happens but if he's going to behave that way he deserves it i'm sorry so when people are down there trying to make this about um racism 
I get furious about it. I get really, really upset because people in this country are obsessed with race. And you know what? If you're obsessed with race, you're a racist. Mm. And that really upsets me that people are down there making this all about what, you know, it's like a white on black thing. And, and people are uh, freaking out in the streets because, you know, it's a, it's a white cop killed a black teenager. I mean, how realistic is it that you think that this guy worked, you know, th- look, he's a cop. He's a bad guy. Don't get me wrong. But th- the motivation here is not I hate black people. You know, he, he got up and he was a bad guy, but he didn't go out to go kill a black man that day. Right. I mean, he's go, he's running around the community doing whatever cops do and he's not shooting black people every day. Did he wake mm-hmm. up that morning and decide I'm going to go gun down a black kid? No, he got into a confrontation with a violent criminal who just moments earlier had robbed and assaulted an innocent person. The fact that the cop didn't know he robbed and assaulted an innocent person doesn't mean the boy ain't dangerous, you know? Yeah. And now you've got the liberal media trying to make a, a a race war in Missouri out of it. Well, they picked the. I see where you're coming from. Like they've picked the wrong case. I mean, there's certainly plenty of evidence that cops are racist. I mean, a lot of cops. Uh, right here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, the ratio of arresting blacks for marijuana in Cheshire County is the highest of all of the counties in all of New Hampshire. I mean, it's like crazy. I, I forget the numbers. The, if you go to freekeen.com and you search, I think it's a search for ACLU and police, you'll find an article where they actually broke down the numbers. And so it seems pretty clear that black black young males are being targeted a whole hell of a lot more than uh, white young males for for you know cannabis arrests. Correlation here in does County. not equal causation, first of all. Okay, so like the fact that the, that black people get arrested for something in higher numbers doesn't mean that there's that, that it's racial profiling, right? I mean, it's something that it doesn't happens. mean that, but it suggests that it, it is. There could be a suggestion there, right? But it's not necessarily cor- correlation and causation are not the same thing, you know. So uh, I, I don't I don't like that. That whenever there's like a demographic disparity, and that might be the case in Cheshire County, okay. But I, it's I, actually I, the case across New Hampshire. But okay, it might be the it might be the case in the entire planet. I don't know. It might but be. The, but the but the point being is that when whenever we see people say like there's a demographic disparity in something, they scream racism, mm-hmm. right? Whenever there's a statistical anomaly, they say, well, that's because everybody's racist because you hate black well, people. I don't think because, everybody are racist. Well, but I mean, I it's, think it's, there's it's, evidence it's, that. Police, white oppression, right? That I think the there's white evidence man, the police the man's are keeping us down. You know, and I'm like, look, deal with your problem. You know, whatever your problem is, and and try not to like. If, if you see some uh, instigate uh, incident of racism in a case, then fine. Like, let's point it out, right? If the if the guys, uh, you know, there was a couple of cops that got exposed as like clan members. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure your clan member probably got some you know thoughts about race, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go, let's go after those guys. But why is everything? Why are people so obsessed with race in this country? It it drives me crazy. I wish we could get rid of it personally. I mean, get rid of the idea. You want to get race. rid of race? Races. No, no I'm I mean, get rid I'm of the idea of, of race. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with races mixing. And in fact, I think if, if as it happens more often, we'll sort of become just brown. Do you, people do you, people do you, will be brown do and you race general, will go away. Do you generally tend to date white women? I do. Yeah. You do? Yeah. I mean, you live in New Hampshire. It'd probably be hard not to, right? It's true. And but it's it's interesting though that if you're black in New Hampshire, you're likely to get arrested. Is what it seems like. <laughs> and why is that? Is it, it, is seems it possible? Like it's racism. Is it possible that if you're black in New Hampshire, you're likely to commit crimes? I don't think that makes sense. Why would a black person be more likely to commit crimes well, than, statistically, a, than a white person? Well, statistically, black people do commit a disproportionate number of crimes. That means right? black people get arrested more often, not necessarily that they're committing the crimes no, more no, often. No, I would, I would absolutely say that there's they a statistical— They only become a statistic when they get arrested, Chris. Well, well that, that's true, but you notice that like there's a lot more crime in black neighborhoods frequently than white neighborhoods. Do you want to— But isn't it, it possible that the police all are these, all behaving these, differently in those do you, neighborhoods? Why, why do white liberals— not move into black neighborhoods. I don't know. I'm not no, a no, liberal. no, no. Don't, don't you even. <laughs> do, I want you to answer the question. I really want, and you know the answer to the question. Uh, I have no because clue. they're terrible know. places to live. Well, I don't think that's a fair thing to say. I mean, I, to, to say that where, black neighborhoods are a which, terrible place. Where's, where's the good black neighborhood? Look, what about where is the good black what neighborhood? What if there were a black Google middle it. class neighborhood? Google it. What you're talking about no. is oh, lower. What if what if there was one, right? So what you're pointing out is that they don't exist, right? 
I don't know that I have no, never just, seen them. You got Google. I'll, I'll go on a rant for a minute. You go Google the good black neighborhood. You go find me one, and I'll shut up. As soon as you find it, I'll stop talking about why this race hysteria in Ferguson and everywhere else, and especially in the libertarian movement, drives me out of my There's mind. There's crime in poor white neighborhoods, too, Chris Cantwell. Yes, I mean, there is. Trailer parks. Hello. Yeah. And yeah, there's crime. More people are more likely to get arrested in poorer places because poor people tend to be more likely to commit robberies and things like okay, that. Okay, so now you're you're now you're you're dangerously close to acknowledging my point. Okay, so black people tend to be more poor. Poor people tend to commit more crimes, right? Okay. Okay. I'll give you so that. So if we're saying that black people are being arrested in greater numbers, and black people tend to be poor, and black and poor people tend to commit more crimes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So is it statistically more likely that black people are committing more crimes? If black people, uh, if poor blacks are being arrested more often than poor whites, then yeah, you've got a case that there's some racist cops out there. I've seen one black guy hang out with us around here. You you know who I'm talking about? He was, Maybe. He was a gentleman who robbed a young lady that we're friends with. Okay. I, I can't help but like laugh at the irony of that. <laughs> I can't help it. You know, that there's there's we are surrounded by white people and there's one black guy who comes around and we're like, hey, yes, come be diverse with us. And then he robs the girl. Well, yeah, he did do that. But to be fair, he did pay uh, pay it back later on. He paid it back. Believe it or not. What a stand up crook. Well, that's a that's a swell guy. I I mean, I'm glad he did. Don't get me wrong. I think he had a kid. He had a kid and, uh, you know, kind of realized that, oh, crap, this whole life. He was just doing his job. He's just trying to put food on his table for his family. Right. (laughs) Well, you know, young people uh, are more likely to, young males especially, are more likely to commit violent crimes. Oh, that's misandry. That's misandry. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you the hate statistics. men. You're, it's you're the just, statistics, you're, you're repeating this feminist nonsense. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,196, silver around $16.24, and Bitcoin around $379.69. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. 
That's 800-686-2237. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, the controversial Keystone XL pipeline failed in the Senate on Tuesday evening. The legislation was one vote short of passing, with all 45 Republicans and 14 Democrats voting in favor, and 40 Democrats and one Independent voting no. Republicans plan to push the bill again in January when they take the majority. They will likely have the 60 votes to pass the bill, but may lack the 67 votes needed to override a presidential veto. On Tuesday, a bill fell that would have allegedly overhauled the National Security Agency's phone data collection program. The vote fell too short, with a count of 58 to 42. The bill had the support of several tech companies, including Apple, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Google. The fight against the bill was led by Senator Mitch McConnell. McConnell said the program was an important part of the war on terror. An Oklahoma City police officer has been ordered to stand trial on dozens of charges of sexually assaulting 13 women while on duty. An Oklahoma County judge allowed Daniel Holtzclaw to remain free on $609,000 bail on Tuesday and scheduled a pretrial conference for January 21st. Holtzclaw has pleaded not guilty to all 36 charges, including rape, sexual battery, and stalking. Four new charges were filed during the two-day preliminary hearing. Police began investigating the 27-year-old Holtzclaw, who was on leave from the department in June. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. And like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. As local authorities in Missouri near the end of their investigation into the Ferguson shooting, a separate federal review of the police department could hold the potential for longer-lasting change. According to the Associated Press, a county grand jury is expected to announce its findings soon in the August 9th shooting of 18-year-old Michael Brown by a Ferguson police officer. Separately, the Justice Department is investigating the practices of the police department, looking for problems in how officers in the predominantly white department interact with the majority black community. On Tuesday, District Judge Sam Lindsay notified journalist Barrett Brown's defense his sentencing hearing would be rescheduled until December or January. The hearing was scheduled for November 24th in Dallas, Texas. Brown has been behind bars since his arrest on September 12th of 2012 and was held under gag order from September 2013 to April 2014. He's facing charges of threatening a federal agent and hiding a laptop as a result of his journalism on the Stratford hacking case. Several cities in British Columbia, Canada, recently voted to end the practice of adding fluoride to the municipal water supply. Residents of Prince George and Sparwood, B.C. voted to end water fluoridation after community activists raised concerns. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your message or product? The Liberty Bean is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, November 19th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A local man treats his girlfriend to a sumptuous 20-second massage, and an area desk doesn't mind if people sit on it like a chair every once in a while. This is The Onion Week in Review. Following months of anticipation and global fanfare, the royal baby was finally born this week. Sources close to the royal family say the newborn prince spent his first days crawling around Buckingham Palace, eating his first meal, and even speaking his first words. The Onion has obtained this exclusive audio clip. <laughs> Harvey, Harvey, 
Ave ante Cristo. Ave ante Cristo. Ay. In other news, a man's annual six-sentence conversation with his cousin goes smoothly, a generous improv troupe performs for free, and a pool owner has a bathing suit that touched his penis you can borrow. This is the Onion News Network. I have entirely too much fun here. Oh, well, yes, we are having a good time. It is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I'm glad you're having fun, Chris, because I'm not paying you. So <laughs> that, uh, that helps. But we get lots of advertisements out for ChristopherCantwell.com. And That's some true. garbage podcast, which is going to come back. Oh. It will come back. I thought I was going to lose my studios. studio. Yeah. Well, I thought I was going to lose my studio, and I sort of did. But if you look at my uh, my living situation right now it actually does allow for me to continue some garbage podcast so don't worry if you've just been waiting for garbage on your freaking listening device i'm gonna make some excellent you can get that when it's available over at christophercantwell.com now chris uh th- thank you to daryl w perry our friday night co-host he did the research to answer your question about where are the middle class black neighborhoods and they do exist. Uh, they are, according to PraiseDC.com, this is a radio station website, According, actually according originally to AtlantaBlackStar.com, uh, they go through the 10 most affluent black communities in America, and interestingly, 7 out of 10 of them are found in the state of Maryland. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to real quick say uh, <laughs> that Atlanta Black Star is not a credible source of information, and just we'll go we'll go with it i had something i was going to write a reply to something from atlanta black star actually yesterday but uh go ahead i'm sorry well i mean let's just go with the numbers this and is I'll, just I'll, demographics. i will presume that she's telling the truth for this one this let's is go ahead. just demographics i don't know who wrote this it's not cited F- for the purpose of this discussion we will assume that the information is correct and i will come back next week and i will tell you why it's complete garbage Unionville, New York is number 10 on the list. Average family income there is 76,000. Uh, it's a small community in the suburbs of New York, predominantly black, a middle class community. The uh, the population of Unionville, New York is about 600. I just looked it up a moment ago. And then going all the way down the list, you go to up to Windsor Hill, excuse me, View Park, Windsor Hill in California, an affluent black community with an average family income of $159,000 there. Uh, View Park, Windsor Hills are part of a band of districts from Culver City's Fox Hills District on the west to the Los Angeles District of Limert Park. This area is the single largest geographically middle and upper class black community in the United States. Now, what we don't get on this list is the crime rates in these various different areas. But I will go out on a limb and suggest that in upper and middle class black neighborhoods, you do not have the same crime rate that you do in poor black neighborhoods. I think the same thing will be true there as you see in white neighborhoods. You know, you look at the trailer park versus the gated communities, you're going to find more crime at the trailer park. You're, you're absolutely going to see more crime in, in the lower income neighborhood. But my understanding, like, I don't think that, like, um, I, I do think that, you know, in the black community, unfortunately, there's a there's a lot of influence. There's a, there's a lot of... Uh, influence from shall we say gangster rap right like that's a really popular lots of white culture. kids listen to gangster rap yeah, too and a lot in of fact, them are scumbag losers who end up in jail and commit crimes <laughs> okay in fact i believe you uh, had some gangster rap in your past yeah right? i've got some gangster rap in my present i was listening to gangster rap <laughs> earlier this afternoon it's just i had the decency not to take my revolver out and shoot at innocent people on the street when i drove here let's go to the phones here daniel's on the line in california you're on free talk live daniel Hi, guys. I got a couple of quick thoughts about this whole uh, cops and racism thing. Okay, sure. Um, first about the, the crime stats. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the, the real demographic that uh, produces you know, criminals disproportionately has nothing to do with race. It's actually it's poor Southerners, regardless of race. Okay. And if you look within, within even within uh, black communities in uh, non-Southern states, there's a real strong correlation between uh, when someone's family left the South and the likelihood that that person is going to, you know, fall into the gangster culture or whatever hmm. that Mr. Cantwell's been discussing. So that's Interesting. one point. Another thing is about cops. So what you're saying is people from and the South, black people from the South, are more likely to be of a criminal element? No, not specifically from the South. It's, 
It's poor Southerners. If you look anyone at anyone from uh, the South, okay, whether, whether, yeah, whether they whether they be white or black. Yeah, true. Uh, Interesting. So that, yeah, that, that's that that sort of subculture of uh, sort of red. It may just be because uh, you know I don't know. It would be interesting to kind of break down the why as to that because it may just be because it gets so damn cold up here half the year that the criminals just don't want to go out and do anything. Well, I mean, they they talk about. If you if you listen to rap music, right, like they'll talk about like yeah. the summertime in the projects. It's like if it's hot outside, somebody's getting shot, right? Because <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, out yeah. they're out hanging out in the streets, and somebody's gonna get yeah, killed that, in the winter time. They stay that indoors. Same culture. That same culture is in poor white southern trailer parks. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, it's so then. Yeah, haven't you ever seen Trailer Park read, Boys? Read Thomas Stoll's, uh, yeah, read, read Thomas Stoll's, uh black rednecks and white liberals. It's very interesting. He basically traces the modern urban ghetto culture back to poor southern culture, and then from there back to the borderlands of Scotland and England and the redneck culture that developed there and then was transplanted to the southern United States. I imagine, I imagine he's got to make some pretty serious leaps there, but I'll try to take a look into it. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. But, and then another quick point about the cops. Though. This, is, sure. this is, I think, what's overlooked. Um, we understand that... Uh, Cops are highly predatorial in their behavior. The uh, the indispensable skill for a predator is learning to spot vulnerable prey. Mm-hmm. Now, when a cop pulls over a middle class, well dressed white guy, he sees someone who can probably get an attorney, probably knows his rights. Maybe his brother's an attorney. Maybe he knows somebody on the city council. Point is, it's somebody who who can fight back. Yep. yep. When he pulls over a poor minority kid, he sees a guy who probably does not know or cannot articulate his rights, probably can't afford an attorney, probably lacks a lot of the language skills to like appropriately handle a hostile authority figure, all sorts of things that don't allow him to fight back. And that's why I think you see a disproportionate negative effect of cops on minority communities. Yeah, well, well, I totally agree. well, here's the here's the other side of that though, because I think that uh, when you pull over your well-dressed middle-aged white man, he's a lot less likely to resist arrest, right? And cops are cowards. So I mean, why are they not uh, out yeah, going some out? Some of them like to get Yeah, that's true, Chris, but also on the other hand, I mean, we talked to Barry Cooper on this show from nevergetbusted.com. I don't know if you've ever talked to Barry, but when we had him on, he talked about how when he was a cop down in Texas, and he was for a number of years a narcotics officer down there, uh, but when he f- first got started as a cop down in Texas, he said he'd get a rush off of just pulling somebody over to give him a speeding ticket. Right. You know, he'd mm-hmm. get this rush off this, of that. I've heard this story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and then, you know, eventually that kind of went away. Handcuffs open. He's, a, he's, he a, would he's actually, an adrenaline junkie. Well, right, would, but yeah. he's not uncommon, yeah. right? It's not uncommon for cops to be adrenaline junkies, yeah. and so what he explained was that eventually he got to the point where he was leaving handcuffs undone or just not handcuffing people who you know he suspected might possibly run so he could then you know chase after them and tackle them and fight them like he wanted to have an excuse yeah, to crazy. get in a fight I'm, I'm, I'm certain that this exists but the reason that Barry Cooper's story is interesting is because I think it's sort of uncommon right I mean there's a lot of cops who what's are just, uncommon about Barry Cooper th- is that he he left the police and became a good well, guy that too but the thing is that a lot of them are shiftless losers they just just wanted a, they wanted a government job with a pension. They want to go home and screw their wives at the mm. end of the night. They're not trying to get themselves killed. Maybe, Chris, but go ahead, Daniel. What were you saying there? Well, I, what I said was 80% of the problems are going to come from 20% of the problem cops. I mean, most cops, most of the time, aren't looking to cause people other problems. No, they're but definitely the looking to cause people problems. That's their job. That's how they get paid. Yeah, but, that's true. But they're not. But they're not going to be out going and and looking for violent predators, right? That's why they don't. There's this whole. There was a whole thing in, in New Orleans, right? That like the cops are just like throwing rape cases away, and they probably did it with other violent crime things too. And and it's why because it's not what they want to do. They don't want to go after violent they criminals. They want to catch. Prey. They want to. Yeah, but who's your vulnerable prey? Is is your vulnerable prey young people? The vulnerable prey is not. Not the guy who's who runs a really serious risk of uh, fighting back, shooting you, kicking your uh, rear end in, and and resisting arrest. The vulnerable prey is the guy who's not going to resist you, and that more accurately matches the middle-aged white guy yeah, who's not going to fight they can you. Lawyer up. No, no, you know, I think I think you are totally misunderstanding the nature of the threat. The threat. They're not afraid of the guy who's going to fight back. Yes, they, they are. They are that. terrified. No, okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. They know how to handle that problem. They can they can always call in more backup. You don't have a chopper. You don't have a fleet of motorcycles. You don't have a tank. They do. What they are afraid of is the guy who sits there calmly, 
handles it, and then kicks their butt in court. That's the guy who can actually is a problem for them. I'm with Daniel that's on this one. They, that, that's why they do not People fear getting assaulted, period. Guy, as, as, as they're not afraid of it. Daniel, I'm with so you, man. I, I'm with you on this one. Thanks yeah, for the I call mean, tonight. I, I appreciate it. I, more coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. We'll come back with more. Chris Cantwell's here. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
And Free Talk Live is brought to you by ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your online data, meaning that your internet service provider will no longer be able to save your surfing history. They're probably recording all of the websites you visit and the search terms you enter, maybe keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. You can stop that from happening tonight by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and getting started there. Download their app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, even Android devices, plus Linux users. You can also use ProXPN. Those setups a little bit different for you if you're on Linux. It's fairly simple, though. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can get started there for free, but when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You get it all at 50% off the price of the annual account by using code FTL50 when you sign up for the premium account. That's FTL and the number 50. That gets you savings, by the way, for the lifetime of the account. And that 50% off on that annual account price brings the price down to around 5 bucks a month. But if you want to save even more, use code FTLBTC, then pay with Bitcoin, and you'll save 62% off the price of that annual account. So those are two codes, FTL50 or FTLBTC. You get it all with a risk-free free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. As we continue here, let's go to Jake in Tucson. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris. Hello, how you doing? Jake, what's on your mind tonight? Yeah, I, I listened to um, your podcast last night, and uh, it was very interesting. You guys... Uh, we're on the subject of military service and uh, how people can serve and, and still be in a liberty mindset. And, and um, basically, I, I'm in that kind of, uh, I guess, I don't know, that gray area of someone who's, um, I would say, liberty minded, yet still in the service. Mm, sorry to hear that. And um, yeah, I, it's, I find it very difficult because uh, um, I came to liberty, I guess you might call it, transition to that mindset um, mm -hmm. when I was. At 14 years in, and then I wow. was in Afghanistan. Yeah. So, so 14 um, years into the military, you yes. came across the ideas of freedom. They gelled with you. You liked it. You moved uh, closer toward uh, the ideas of liberty. Was it Ron Paul? What brought you on board? I, actually, I, it was Gary Johnson. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, actually, it was Libertopia, the movie. Oh, wow. The movie about the Free State Project, Early Movers. Yes, then it was Gary Johnson. How did you find and, Libertopia? Uh, was it just like a random thing on the internet? What did, what connected you to that? Well, I was researching um, candidates, and I wouldn't say that I was on board with Gary Johnson, but uh, I came across Libertopia. Was he in that and movie? I, I don't believe so, okay. um, but it, it le the, the path led me to Gary Johnson. Gotcha. You know, And then I had actually, a long time ago, I wrote a letter while I was deployed to you guys, and, and you... Um, and I described myself as a constitutionalist, you know, at the time. And and, um, and it, it, I'm telling you, it's, uh, I guess I've had quite a, <laughs> a growth in, in what I would consider uh, my understanding of liberty. Okay. Um, but I, I just kind of wanted to lay my case out because I'm having a, a difficult time. Um, so please do. I'm at – I'm sorry? I said please do. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm at I'm – at, um, I just hit 16. My 16 years. My enlistment – Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. 16 years. So my enlistment is up at 17, but that puts me three years from retirement. Got it. Um, you know, so like I have this just I, – I, I'm a Free State Project uh, participant. Excellent. Um, and I, it's just – I don't know. I was curious because it was nice to hear you guys talk about it yesterday because I have a real, real tough time uh, dealing with it. Um, Dealing with the idea did, that, just to clarify, the, the difficulty is that you're four years away from retirement. You could stick it out for another four years in the military and then have some level of monthly pension uh, coming from them as opposed to you know going the principled route or whatever and leaving the military. Um, that's Is yeah. that your difficulty? Yes, and um, also the... Mark has – I know he's not there tonight, but he, he's often said how little the military gets paid, which I, I think he's pretty much incorrect on that um, because we do get paid well. Mm. So that is another – that's another barrier to, to, to my just leaving. You know, I have bills and I have kids and, and – um, That's how they get you. And, Doing uh, your job. 
Yeah. Well, so what it's are they asking difficult. you to? What's your role in the military these days? I mean, are they are you combat or what are you doing? Uh, I was operational. Um, what's that mean? For co-conspirator. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's uh, so I would fly on a plane, um, but I don't do that at the moment due to some medical issues. So in a way, I've I'm kind of padded now against a role in that uh, type of uh, combat, I guess. So you um, previously have flown planes. Does that mean you're in the Air Force? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've previously flown planes. You don't do that anymore due to medical condition. I don't know, Chris. What do you think? I mean, I he's think, got four but, years I mean, left. It's in, look, uh, if you're if you're calling here looking for somebody to justify you staying in the military, I think you're calling the wrong place, frankly. Okay, because the, <laughs> you know what you're I doing, that. and that's why you're calling here, sir. You're calling here because you know that it's wrong. That's why that's why you're on the phone right now because you know that it's wrong, and you're looking for somebody to tell you that it's not. That's what it sounds like no, to me. No, 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 no. I, I I I appreciate your, your point of view. I, I'm very thankful. Um, I you know, I don't know that I want justification. I just find it very difficult. I'm just it, just kind of pleading my. I'm just saying it's hard for me to justify getting out at this moment. And yeah, I mean I don't. I, I believe me. I I get it. I understand. I I don't appreciate what's going on. I don't agree with it at all. And uh, I just I don't know. Maybe I'm just trying to tell people how difficult it can be sometimes with certain certain people. I I don't um, I don't doubt that it's difficult. And I and I and there's there's a certain amount of sympathy that I can have for you. But I mean you've 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 been overseas. You've been at war. You know what you know what this is. You know what's happening. And and now maybe you don't have to be directly in combat. Maybe you don't personally have to kill anybody. But whatever you're doing, I said co-conspirator for a reason. Whatever you're doing, you're playing a supporting role. And you know what? There's a certain argument to be made that hey, if you come back here, you get a job. You're paying taxes. You're paying a support. You're Doing, yeah, anyway. you're doing the same thing. I mean, the, you know, this this possibility exists. Some people will give you the argument that, well, if you stick it out the next three years and then you get that pension, then you can dedicate all your energy to the fight for liberty. And I mean, you there could. Are these, these, I mean, Rich Paul's made the argument before uh, Chris Cantwell that uh, that there's nothing wrong inherently with like taking a welfare check from the state because ultimately you paid into the system. So why not get some money back out of it, especially if you're going to use that money to try to take the state down? Well, that depends on a number of things. A lot of people didn't pay into that system and those people deserve to get absolutely nothing from it okay but you know there are people who, who did things right you know and hey you know look in the absence of the state we would have security people who were you know rugged men who would run around with weapons and go deal with dangerous people okay i mean these jobs would exist in the absence of the state i don't think they'd be quite as bountiful as they are today but they would exist you know as much as you might like chris Campbell, for uh, people to leave their government roles especially the police or the military the ones who are more actively involved in violence, um, I can also understand why somebody who might come to the ideas of liberty wouldn't necessarily want to do that, but also the fact that I'd rather have more liberty-oriented cops even in this state monopoly system. But you know that they can't do that. Well, yeah, hey, I, look, go ahead. I'd, I'd like to talk on, on that point of view. because. Um, well, so hold that thought, quiet. Jake. We'll bring, we'll bring you back for that here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Cops have discretion. They can ignore certain things. There's more coming up here in a moment. This is Free Talk Live. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. 
I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you take control. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You know, we started the show intending to give you more information about the whole Bill Cosby situation. We never really got around to that. Maybe we will. Still, we've yeah. got a couple segments left here. With the context of the last two segments, he probably was a rape. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was terrible. It's the cause, man. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what the truth is, but we can give you some of the allegations here if we get the chance. But this is how Free Talk Live works. We come to the table with stuff to talk about, and if you've got other stuff to talk about- You call in and derail us and totally, totally ruin the show. No, it's been great, I'm actually. I've been, no, having, I've been having a blast yeah. tonight. Good calls so far tonight. Your calls are welcome. The toll-free number is 855 450 Oh, by the way, Free Talk Live brought to you by the 101 Reasons film, 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. This was a great movie. I watched it for the first time over the weekend. I'm one of the co-producers of the movie, so I got to see it, sort of an early copy of it. It came out officially on Monday. It's now been two full days since it's been released, and the movie is doing very well, I would say. Uh, it's gotten about 3,000 views a day for the last two days, which means that it's doing better than Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which was the first movie that I was the executive producer on. That was 3,000 views in the first day, and then it went down to around like 1,500 the second day. So Derek J is a more of a significant drop. The 101 Reasons films kind of staying steady at 3,000. It's not spiking up in a dramatic, you know, viral shoot up, which would be nice to see happen. But 6,000 views in two days isn't too shabby no, for a Liberty not, movie. That's not shabby at all. For an hour long say. presentation that's, as well. That's huge for an hour long presentation. Normally, it's difficult to get people to share long videos Correct. in general. I a mean, two minute video is a typical you, successful you, length you, on you YouTube. Want a, you want a viral video, you do not exceed five minutes. There's right. no, it's the the major rule in YouTubing. And uh, so you got an hour long film that's getting 3,000 a day. 
you're uh, you're off to a real good start. Yeah, but. it's going very well. And if you haven't seen it yet and you love freedom, if you don't love freedom, please don't bother. Don't waste your time on this. But if you love liberty, you understand what freedom means, you know, your right to live your life how you want, so long as you don't hurt anybody else, and that in order to be free, you have to allow others to be free. If you get those ideas, this is the film for you. Go to 101reasonsfilm.com. You can watch it right there via their YouTube channel. That's 101reasonsfilm.com. It's all about New Hampshire and why New Hampshire is the destination for the ideas of freedom, for people who care about liberty. And I think it's persuasive, it's well edited, and it's got a lot of good information packed into that one hour. Go check it out. In fact, the torrent's available now. So if you don't want to watch it on YouTube, you want to download a copy for yourself in 1080p, you can do that through the torrent that's available on the Pirate Bay. Uh, so you can go and actually get a link to that real easily by going to freekeen.com. I posted a link up there. I imagine that one today. might even be on like legaltorrents.com or something like that because we're not intellectual property freaks who are telling you not to copy our movie. Go ahead, please. burn some DVDs, hand them out. Yeah, please copy the movie. In fact, I'm actually working on uh, behind the scenes on and putting a DVD together. Excellent. Uh, which will actually include both the 101 Reasons film and Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree on the same disc, because I think Ooh, they're really... feature. Yeah, well, like a grindhouse, I think, or whatever. I think that uh, these movies complement themselves uh, so well, because civil disobedience doesn't really get a play in the 101 Reasons film, and so it's a nice... Because like, one of the 101 Reasons is not go to jail? <laughs> That's true. That's true. But we've had some really exciting civil disobedience here in New Hampshire sure as well. have, man. And uh, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree gives you a slice of that. So go and check it out, 101reasonsfilm.com, as we go to your calls and thoughts. We still have Jake on the line in uh, Tucson calling regarding the military. There was a point that you were getting at jake you wanted to make and uh, we just ran out of time in that last segment so go ahead hey, hey uh, yeah I, uh so um i we were talking about um you know wanting more liberty oriented people in the position of like the public service i guess the military police and you know whatever um and i was going to say my last point i guess was that i am not quiet about my position so because i know i guess a lot of people are kind of scared to to uh, talk about it, but um, I pretty much tell everybody I meet that I work with my points of view, and uh, I would say that that's a pretty decent thing to do. Yeah, that's you a. Know, I, I mean, if you're going to be in, at least be out about your viewpoint. That makes sense because they can't fire you for having that viewpoint at this point. You know, you're tenured or whatever. They're not going to be able to terminate you because of it. So that makes sense. And the very, you know, you could be responsible for turning more people inside the milita uh, military towards the ideas of freedom. I think there are some some good things that can be done from the inside of the system. Chris can't. Well, I don't think he should just quit his uh, necessarily should just quit his job. Look, it's it's a value judgment that has to be made, right? I mean, look, it's it's not like you can't. Uh, it, it's not like there's no value that you can provide to advancing your beliefs there. I'm, I'll acknowledge that, right? But you know, is it is it a is it a moral? Is it a good thing? You know, I'm going to go ahead and say that you'd have to do quite a bit. You'd really have to do quite a bit in your lifetime to make up for some of the wrong that you're going to have to do to stay in there, and you know that, and that's why you're thinking about getting out, and that's why you're talking to us. Mm. I, I and I, I believe me, I, I researched some of the avenues to get out early. Right, at, I can't do it uh, right now. Um, what do you mean? But well, well, because you programs they have. hang hang on, hang on one second, because I mean, it's not that you can't. It's a matter of the price might be too high, though, right? So I mean, let's let's well, just I, speak I, I, in I, honest I, terms. It's uh, excuse me, just one second, okay? And I and I and I do respect that. Look, you're you're calling in here, and you're being pretty honest with us, and I appreciate that. But I I'm I'm a big fan of like uh, what what I perceive to be straight talk here. It's not it's not a matter of can't. It's a matter of there's an expense attached to it. That there's there's a value judgment that you have to make. You can leave the military. You can do that. But there are situations that will come as a result there are consequences of doing that that you might not want to pay i can't support my children from jail you know what i mean like in, in well you may not end up in jail i mean we've had guys call the show over the years who have explained how they were able to get i believe honorable discharges uh after you know uh going and basically just saying look i'm not going to do this anymore i'm i'm leaving uh, you know, what are you going to do about it? That kind of thing. And that it has actually worked out for them. I don't remember the exact details on how they went about that, but there are stories like that. And we've heard them on this show. Like, it's not as bad as they make it seem like it is. Yeah. And other guys got, you know, other guys get kicked out with dishonorable discharges and they still manage to go 
and make a life for themselves. They don't end up in jail. You can do this. It's you a, can. It's, it's, it's a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, yeah, no. You, myth, go ahead. Make your a, point. I'm sorry. It's a myth, I apologize. It's a myth that, that hold this because they tell you, oh, if you get a dishonorable discharge, you, your your life is ruined. And I have a brother who was in the army, and every job he's ever had. They don't even ask to see any evidence sure. that he was honorably discharged. Well, what are you worried about then? I mean, what's care. the concern? I mean, the You're, worst the case scenario, you, well, you could haul off and punch a commanding yeah. officer if you had to. The to get worry out of there. is jail, right? You're worried they're going to put <laughs> you like in the brig. So well, no, it's just I, uh, my point is I get like three years and some change, and I can get a decent retirement. It's the pension then. You don't mm -hmm. want to lose the pension. That's what this. That's what your primary well, yeah. motivation is. How how hard is that? You know, I'm saying it's not principled. I get that. I I I cannot. Call, I could never call myself a principled. You know. Nobody uh, can say they're I, truly principled, right? Because it would require, you know, not walking on the government's roads and things like that. I mean, everybody to some extent has paid a tax. Everybody to some extent has obeyed a regulation, an ordinance, even yeah. if, you know, like, you know, even in Derek J's victimless crime spree, it's this epic uh, victimless crime spree where Derek doesn't hurt anybody, but at the very end he takes a plea deal because, well, he went in too deep and, you know, we can only take so much. Right. I don't blame you, man. But that's, I don't. But there's, there's, there's a big difference, I, I think, between, uh, between driving on a road, Paying a tax that you're extorted into paying, and like not uh, taking a pension, you know, let's 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 mm. not yeah. let's not cut corners here, guys. True, true. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I it's guess tempting, I, though, Chris. I mean, wouldn't you be tempted in that situation? Look, I I ran for Congress. Believe me, I understand the temptation of the ring of power, pal. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You know, uh, well, I don't have any power, but <laughs> well, just a grunt. Look, believe me, a monthly paycheck. You know that that you don't have to show up for work for anymore is power, right? I mean, if you mm. come, if you True. look, you stick out the three years, you come to New Hampshire, you've got a livable income. Look, you can do. That's good. pretty sweet. You can do. You you you'll be in a good position. You'll you'll have a good life with your family. You'll have you know everything that you need. Basically, we need people with money here. Who yeah. cares if it comes from the state? So, well, you know, I don't I don't want this guy to hurt himself anymore. This guy's yeah. going to go and act in service to the state. He knows that he's doing wrong. He's it's doing. Tough. He's mo being morally injured. He's suffering moral injury by staying. It's a in. tough. It's a tough call, Jake. I thank you for the call tonight. I wouldn't blame you for staying in. Think but long I also, and hard about it. Though, I also pal. would understand getting out Thank as well. And I thank you and uh, and let us know how it goes. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. You can take control in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Attention men, are you urinating often, waking at night to urinate? We want to send you a free bottle of Super Beta Prostate, made with a natural ingredient that supports healthy urine flow, bladder emptying, and is shown to reduce waking at night from the urge to urinate. You can try Super Beta Prostate free. Only pay shipping and handling. This free giveaway is available while supplies last. For details, just call 800-659-5412. That's 800-659-5412. Call 800-659-5412. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988.
After vetting the 37-year-old for factors such as looks, screen presence, and film credits, Hollywood insiders unanimously agreed this week that area man Dennis Kierning lacks the sheer star power necessary to carry a major motion picture. Industry experts spoke to reporters today about the Charlottesville, Virginia resident, who they say just doesn't have what it takes to crack into the A-list. Love him or hate him, I think we can all agree that Dennis Kierning is not a bankable star. He's got to have sex appeal, talent, charisma, and most importantly, that X factor. I should want to sleep with Dennis. I should want to be Dennis. Do I want to be Dennis? No. Experts agreed the Virginia native and father of one does not have the widespread appeal required to secure a distribution deal with wide release, while also saying they had no reason to believe Kierning would ever be capable of delivering the type of powerhouse performance that generates buzz at Sundance, Cannes, or Comic-Con. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, maybe enough time for your call. If you dial now, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features there. And if you like what we're doing, then please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You get perks. We take the five bucks in and invest it into the show, meaning that we'll get on more radio stations. In fact... I want to welcome our newest affiliate, which is actually a former affiliate, uh, The Rock of Talk, 95.9 FM and AM 1600 KIVA in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. So welcome aboard. We actually were on uh, Kiva years ago, and you know things happened. We got taken off, and the format changed or whatever. And now it's a talk station in a different way now, and the new program director, new owner, brought us back on board. So uh, welcome back to our Albuquerque listeners. Welcome back, Albuquerque. So good to be with you. <laughs> so you can I go- love that Breaking Bad thing. You guys were show. awesome. It was a great show. Uh, so the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And uh, by the way, amp.freetalklive.com, as I said, you get perks, so you get access to the amp only call in lines, the amp only uh, podcast, the amp only Facebook group. Chris, you're in that group, the amp only Facebook group. I am because I am an amp supporter. I I don't get paid to do the show. I pay them. Do you believe this? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm such a loser. I've got this whole like professional media personality thing all screwed up. Go to ChristopherCantwell.com slash donate and send me Bitcoin because yes. I am poor. You are desperate for cash right now. You're even doing uh, nude modeling on uh, the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm. Uh, I'm ne- nearly nude modeling. Uh, well, I mean, it is nude. There's a nude photo of me on the internet right now, but it's been photoshopped. Really? It's been photoshopped. Oh, that wasn't actually a V mask in front of your genitals. No, no, no. That is a that is a naked photograph of me oh, where, wow. where I have photoshopped in a V mask. I ah. wanted the full authentic. Should we talk about where that uh, where you can find that picture? We can we can do that. There's uh, there's a website that has been launched it, here. It wasn't. I didn't actually take the photo. What what happened was there's this like. There's well, we this, don't know who took the photo. There's, right? there's I mean, this, we don't want to reveal too much here. The thing is that there's this local like pro government activist group, right? And their website is stopfreekeen.info, right? Yeah. And these lunatics they stalk me 
all over the, the place, and they like post pictures of me. On the, they they dream about me. They're obsessed with my sex life. They're so weird. <laughs> and they have this website, stopfreaking.info, and apparently they managed to get a naked photograph of me. They had the decency to like put the Guy Foss mask over my genitalia. Right. And thank you for for that, thank- Andrea or whoever took the photo. But really, it's it's an invasion of my privacy. It's an invasion. <laughs> yeah. they, they've got pictures of me lifting weights and using How did my they computer. Do that? They're really they're sick. They're resourceful. They're sick, they sick people. They're governments. You know, they're pro-government people. So they're just like property is theft. They're a bunch of liberals. You know, they don't <laughs> care. They're just like you come in your house, I don't take know, photos. Man. I, the stop free keeners, from what I've seen, are a mix between liberals and conservatives. I mean, there there's all kinds of political stripes in there. But one thing they agree on is that the state should crush uh, free keen. Yes, that because of course, on. liberals and conservatives can certainly agree agree on that much that freedom is a bad thing yep. and we have to stop it so uh, check it out stopfreekeen.info the latest uh the latest article is the one where there's actually a nude picture of you in there christopher cantwell let's go to your phone calls and thoughts oh by the way don't forget the amp program at amp.freetalklive.com please go get signed up over there for five bucks a month christopher cantwell.com slash donate was it christopher cantwell.com slash donate Perfect. if you'd like to do that and then i can stop nude modeling for pro-government lunatics on the internet todd is in tallahassee you're on free talk live hey todd Hey guys, how are y'all? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, actually, Vladimir Putin. Um, mm, okay. and let me just say this real quickly. I have been, uh, I just discovered you guys a couple of weeks ago on 93.3 here in Tallahassee. Excellent. Um, I'm kind of become an addict. Uh, um, I really enjoy your show very much. Hey, thanks. Before um, you go on with your thoughts, if you are enjoying Free Talk Live, contact your local program director when you get a chance during the week during business hours and say thank you uh, for airing Free Talk Live because program directors never hear enough nice stuff about the stuff they put on the air. Usually it's people calling to complain. So if you call right, and say right. something nice, then it'll be really conspicuous, and then you might get more hours of Free Talk Live. Yeah, I would like that, too. Yeah, because um, we do much, three hours a night. How, I think, how much more is available every night? How, we do three do hours a do? night, seven nights per week, live, here on Free okay. Talk Live. I get it. I think I get it every night here. You certainly can. Uh, but I think you guys are only taking an hour, but I could be wrong. Maybe I don't, I don't have my uh, my affiliate list in front of me, and we've got you know 150 of them, so I don't remember all of the, uh, the details on that. Todd, uh, what were you going to say? Well, um, I was just uh, curious. Uh, what do you guys think? Maybe Vladimir Putin's next move after Ukraine is going to be? I don't. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm certain he's going to get what he wants there eventually. Um, and uh, and and do you think maybe he's he's, you know, uh, I, I have a friend of mine who's uh, trying to get some uh, uh, t-shirts made that says Russia is back. Um, he's trying to get. Uh, he really thinks that they're you know a, a real problem for us in the future. And and I kind of think so too. Um, like they never maybe went away completely. Um, and I'm just maybe getting your thoughts on that. What do you think, Chris Cantwell? Is Russia going to be a problem for the United States in the future? I think that governments are problems for people and that mm-hmm. the United States and Russia will probably uh, saber rattle at each other and sort of be jerks and kill a whole bunch of people. And that's probably what's going to happen is that a bunch of people are going to die because a bunch of government sociopaths are going to be jerks. Yeah, I'm but s- is there going to be some kind of actual overt conflict or is it going to be another Cold War? I mean, what's that going to look well, like? Well, I mean, that was I wrote about that, that there was like another Cold War. And I'm like, I'm not concerned about what the Russians are doing. You know, I'm concerned about what the United States is doing. The United States is screwing me over all the time and they're like be afraid of the russians and i'm like well the russians yeah. are not my problem i agree it's misdirection well, so i think do you think they're in concert so do you think they're in concert no I, I wonder about that sometimes i mean look you gotta you gotta imagine there's a bunch of powerful sociopaths who want to kill people and steal money you know they might have a conversation once in a while they got it together at the bilderberg thing yeah, but and how whatnot. likely do they all get along right i mean if there's different gangs of sociopaths out there there is a good chance they will be at each other's throats for power i mean there's that and then they might you know go sneak That's off true. into the men's room together for all i know <laughs> i don't know what these people are doing it's a secret for a reason Oh, but that's what Maybe they're checking each other for wires. <laughs> Go ahead, Todd. I'm sorry. I, I want to know. I want to know more. Um, yeah. So you'll never know. I mean, you'll never know for sure, right? Like, you know, these international yeah, not- international intrigue, you'll never have any clue what the real situation is. But we do know uh, that, you know, that, that I, well, I agree with Chris Cantwell here on this one, that, uh, that, whether it's red china or whether it's russia or uh, iran or whatever the the boogeyman of the moment is it's all designed to distract you from what's happening here now it's the american government that are putting millions of people in prison cells here and it's not the russians absolutely 
Absolutely. I, listen, I completely agree with that. I do. I, I do. And I, and I realize that they're going to use whatever they can use to keep us, you know, looking the other direction. I mean, it's sleight of hand. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, I do think that problems can arise that, that, that we are going to have to deal with either militarily or, you know, uh, covertly with the CIA or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, a lot of the I mean, it's just like the whole thing with with the the Muslim problem we have now. Everybody, it, those people aren't. We don't have a Muslim they're, they're problem. Muslim, I'd like man. to point it's out, about power. Uh, Todd. It's about power. No, no, no. I agree completely. That thing is about power, and those people are using sure. religion to distract but, from the reality. But of let's what they're doing let's be clear, right? Like areas. like Russia is a lot more dangerous than Afghanistan as far as states Absolutely. are concerned. I mean. Absolutely. Russia actually has jets that can fly around and things like that. <laughs> uh, they they so, still have lots of ICBMs, I'm sure, too. So, you know so the mean? U.S. government would have to tread a lot more carefully involving in itself in some sort of a conflict like that. Thanks for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, Russia... Probably not likely to be some sort of world war between uh, the United States and Usually Russia. Usually a short destruction and whatnot. I don't yeah. think so. I mean, they might, you know, screw around proxy wars. They do different things. You know, next time the United States decides to go and invade a country, they fund the opposition. I mean, they do things like this. The United States does this to Russia. There's, are, there's internal conflicts in the, you know, the whole Russia, Chechnya, et cetera, et cetera. That area is, you know, definitely a conflict-oriented place. But the U.S. government, from what I understand, hasn't exactly rolled in tanks uh, like they have done in other places right. so they're they're, they're gonna pick on the easy marks as we were talking about earlier yeah. and and of course afghanistan was not an easy mark necessarily they had a tough as hell time going up against a bunch of ragtag group of insurgents yeah, it didn't pan out so good right so they certainly aren't going to want to go up against uh the the russians jake is in new york you're on free talk live hello jake hi how are you hey what's on your mind nothing i i went to the colbert report today uh-oh well you i I had I had tickets with my friends, so I I know oh. it's like balancing my life between like my personal life and my anarchist life. It, it's funny because I have to be sort of a closet anarchist, but New York I went City. To the Stephen Colbert show. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You, you got to tell us oh, real quick, like less than thirty seconds. Go. Okay, so at the Stephen Colbert report, they make fun of Chris Cantwell and the Free State Project. Oh no, that was What tonight? about Stop Free Keen? Do they make fun of them too? Yeah, yeah, it was Free Keen. It was. Free no, no, no! Stop Free Keen. I yep. don't think Do they don't they don't mention top, stop free keen because they came to town and they shot video of free keen activists and the stop free keeners. They didn't make the cut into the uh, the final product. I can't remember. I just I remember seeing Chris Cantwell's face and I was just completely shocked. <laughs> uh, don't miss be good. the Colbert it's gonna be report on tonight. tonight. Yeah, don't it's going to be it, on folks. tonight on uh, Comedy Central. I think right. That's where his show is. We'll see you tomorrow night. FreeTalkLive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism. With regular 